My name is Mike Voiles. I'm co-owner and operator of Kung Fu Tea Mobile Truck Valley Center. Uh, come on, stop by for America's favorite bubble tea. Enjoy handcrafted iced teas, milk teas, and slushes at our food truck here, parked at Armstrong Feed and Supply off Coal Grade Road. Welcome to the Grub Enthusiast Grubcast, where we're on a mission to find the best places to eat, drink, and have a good time. And occasionally, we get to sit down with some of the amazing food artists that make that possible. Thank you for listening as usual. If you like what you hear, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps out the show. My guest today is Mr. Mike Boyles from Kung Fu Tea, Valley Center, California. Thank you so much for coming on the show today, Mike. Um, so nice to have you. I have, I have a, to kind of give you a little background on Kung Fu Tea for me, um, I don't remember when I started liking blended drinks. I, as a matter of fact, I do. My first experience was uh, this thing called Electric Company as a kid on television or the Croft Superstars. And when I was a boy, uh, they had a cartoon that had like, uh, what's it called? It was like, um, I'm trying to think of the series. It was like um, Electro Woman and Dyna Girl. Mm -hmm. It was Sigmund the Sea Monster. It was like the Munsters, the Gilligan's Island. It was all kind of in the same Saturday morning cartoon jam. And... I'd be left alone kind of on Saturday morning when I was lucky because I my dad was a landscaper. So we, I was always either with him or I was lucky enough to be at home on the on the couch. And I remember even as a kid, I would make we had this long, uh, long couch and we I would make the couch into a car. And don't ask me how I got an old steering wheel. I moved the pillows around and made it into my car. And then I'd sit there and watch cartoons every Saturday. And one of the one of the cartoons, one of the little fill ins between the shows was this uh, guy uh, showing a video, a cartoon video of how to take a popsicle, not popsicle, ice cube tray. And you take uh, your favorite liquid, whether it be uh, lemonade or cran apple or whatever it is, you'd fill it up. Then you'd cover it with cellophane, and then you would take the, the toothpicks, mm -hmm. and you'd poke them into each one of those things. Remember that? Well, I, I started doing that, and that was kind of my first little uh, understanding of a frozen blended or frozen style drink thing. And then later on, I just decided to bypass the whole ice tray thing. Just get a big plastic container and fill it full of juice and stick it in the freezer. Did it every Saturday. One of my favorite things in the world. I think the icy was the first real uh, kid drink that I, I got into, and and cold slush and on a hot day, born and raised in Hawaii, yeah. the icy was the thing. Yeah. We'd go to Seven Eleven and get the slushies and the Slurpees, and, and that was it, right? Every time hit. And and what year were you a kid there? I mean, so I was born and raised in Hawaii. I was uh, living there through the nineties, okay. pretty much. Moved okay. around as a military brat for a few years, okay, um, and then ended up moving back to Hawaii. Graduated there, started college there. Wow. Um, and, uh, the whole thing. yeah, that's, that's where, okay. uh, so I got to spend a lot of time, uh, back home. All my family on my mother's yeah. side is all out there. Yeah. So, uh, get, get to go back to see them enough, but not as much as I'd like, obviously. Which, uh, island? <laughs> Born and raised on Oahu. Okay. Okay. Well, my sister moved there in 1990. What part? She was all over the place. Mm -hmm. Uh, they weren't well off. And they ended up having a lot of friends through the church mm. that would uh, rent them spots. Mm. And one of my favorite places they had was uh, one spot in Huaykai. Ooh. And uh, they had a back apartment or back house. Mm -hmm. And I remember going there about 1990 and just, it blew my mind. Because I'd been there one, one time before in 1987, uh, right after high school. And... It was, it was just a touristy thing. We, I stayed at you know, one of the outriggers, mm -hmm. and I remember one of my favorite experiences was uh, meeting a girl uh, at a fair they had right on, what is the main street in Oahu? Right in Waikiki? It's the main drag along the beach. Is that Kapiolani? Yeah, Kapiolani or okay. Kalakaua run okay. right through there, I believe. Yeah. So I, I remember right they had this big fair right outside the hotels, and I remember just having this blast of a time. Right out there. The market. It might have been Aloha Market, which no longer exists, I believe. But that's where they had a big space where a bunch of vendors and things would come around and whatnot. Yeah. But that might be the, the spot you're talking about. And that was fantastic. Oh, this one actually was they, they closed the streets down. Oh. The whole street oh. along the front of between the hotels. And the and, beach? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. That would be a show out there for sure. I don't know what it was, but it was, it was crazy. Yeah. That was my, my experience initially. Mm -hmm. And then I went again. Uh, like I said, 1990, my sister got married and then she moved there from LA. She was in LA and she moved to Oahu with her husband. And I'd go back 
pretty much all the time. And I go for shaved ice. I remember that. Well, there's one. Can I think of the name of it? But it's a real famous one. It's been around forever. Mono or Kono or. Mm. Mats- yeah, the- Matsumoto shave ice on the North Shore in Haleiwa. Okay, they are the one that gets all the, the looks. press. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they've expanded uh, pretty big over the last few years. I know they've got much bigger space, but I know they they were famous for having all kinds of uh, celebrities roll there, and they would post all their celebrities and autographs uh, along the wall. Adam Sandler, really, you know, they, Jennifer okay. Aniston, yeah, all, yeah. all the big names yeah. that go through there. Yeah, um, and that was that was probably the one that you'd be picking out. I would say that was probably it. It was like a shack. Mm-hmm. It had a little, it's own little parking lot. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I remember very small parking lot. Lots of stickers. They sold stickers, crazy that, stickers. That, that sounds That's like the them one. too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, that was my first experience with uh, the, again. So that first experience as a kid. Mm-hmm. Later on, uh, going to Hawaii and having uh, shaved ice of all different kinds. Uh, I even took the last time I was there with my kids, which was about 10, 12 years ago. We did um, a shave ice tour. Of Hawaii. Wow. We hit every ice spot we can find. Oh, yeah. And we must have done 10 in a day. <laughs> and we just tried all of them. Mm-hmm. It was just, we love doing that. Yeah. Uh, so anyways, when we when, when the, my kids were little, I started, we, I don't know what it was, but I, the boba started hitting. Everybody started doing boba. And I, there was a place in LA called uh, Boba, LA Boba or something like that. Mm-hmm. I took my kids and they just loved it. When I came to San Diego, it wasn't that easy to find. But I'd found... Kung Fu Tea in on Convoy in Claremont Mesa. Mm-hmm. Great location. And I just fell in love immediately because I tried other ice places. I won't mention any names, but uh, to disparage them in any way, but I've tried some other ones and they just didn't have it. They didn't have the sweet. They didn't have that pungent taste. Uh, I'd been to some other ones that were just watered down. Didn't, didn't have any of the character. When I found this, my, my kids and I just fell in love immediately. And we'd go down there. Every time we were passing through that area, we would stop off and have a, have a mango slush with a mango je- jelly. Mm-hmm. But then it was, another, it was another jelly because they stopped the mango jelly for a, uh, about a year or maybe even two. And it was some other kind of jelly. Maybe the nada is like a coconut it, one. It's a clear one. Coconut, it's kind of pineapple clear one. white. Uh, they also have the lychee. Uh, little yeah. bobas. Okay. Yeah. And then the, um, there's a- aloe too would be the other okay. here one. Yeah. And so we, we just started going there all the time. And, we were, and then they, when they had one at San Marcos, it's a little harder for us to get to. Not that Claremont Mesa is any easier, but it was just, it's in a weird place. You're usually passing through there at a rapid pace. Mm-hmm. When I saw you the other day, I, it, my head almost s- snapped off. It was just, I was making a, r- a left right hand turn on Valley off of Co- uh, Colgrade. Mm-hmm. And just out of the side of my eye, because I was driving a car that had no sides, mm-hmm. and I just, out of the corner of my eye, I saw a Kung Fu Tea sign. And I was like, nah. And I double-taked, and I said, oh, wow. What? No. No way. I drive over there, and you're there. And I'm like, oh, my God. My kids, I, told my, I texted my kids immediately and said, man, Kung Fu Tea is in Valley Center. They're like, what are you, ta- what are you talking about? I said, yeah. Because they know that there's not many buildings mm-hmm. like to have a shop. Mm-hmm. So they were like, no, it's impossible. I said, it's a, it's a van. It's a truck. It's a, it's a Kung Fu tea truck. And they were like, oh, okay. And one of my kids, actually, I think he drove right over to after school and had another one. So my kids, uh, well, it's funny because when my kids were little, on, almost on the same day, uh, during the summertime, I used to run them down to either the wild animal park or the zoo. Mm-hmm. And I remember this one occasion where I was feeling ultra generous this day. We had passes to the, uh, the, the zoo, and we didn't get down there very much because it's far. It's about 45 minutes an hour, depending on how you drive. But on this day, I was like making a real special thing. I said, let's go down and let's get uh, Bronx pizza, okay? So let's get Bronx pizza, and then we're going to stop off and get you what you want. You wanted the, the Kung Fu tea. Okay, well, this is the day that they decided, both of them, to decide to go on this bungee jump thing that they had at the zoo. And I was, needless to say, it was, it was a disaster. Oh no. It was a disaster. But, but that was the day that they were just full of everything they wanted. And it didn't, it didn't end up being that way at the end, but that was the day. So anyways, man, when I saw you guys, I was like, man, this is fantastic. And so now I need to know, I mean, given the circumstances where in Valley Center, there isn't too many, I mean, there's new buildings coming. They're, they're gonna, I don't know how many years they are away, but there's going to be several business parks coming up here soon. 
what, how did you come here, man? Now that you're here, welcome, by the way. Thank you. Uh, so we, um, you know, it's, it was a long process to get to where we were. What we had originally planned was being a part of the park circle um, uh, growth that's okay. happening there. Okay. Um, and, and some uh, developer that's working in that area we'd gotten in contact with. They love the idea of the Kung Fu tea. They said, you're, you know, you're at the top of our list. As we get closer to time, we'll, we'll manage to, you know, talk more. And as things kind of pushed on. This was probably right a little after the pandemic and, and, and a lot of uh, growth and, and building here in Valley Center seemed to slow down a little bit and, and some of the projects seemed to stagnate. Um, cost materials, building and things like that. You Everything know, doubled, had, right? Yeah, exactly. And so it made sense for things to slow down until things leveled off. And and me and my partner, Jenna, uh, who is the co-owner um, and operator of uh, Kung Fu Tea Valley Center Truck, uh, she and I were sitting around and, and, and really trying to push the project in our minds and how we can make this work, uh, the idea of a mobile truck came up and, and we thought of how we can possibly make that work. You know, what, what all the different logistical dynamics that come involved with the truck and things like that were, were going through our mind as at that point we had just started working, um, directly with Kung Fu Tea Corporate. And when we were working with them, you know, they bid onto the idea thinking we can make it work, uh, made our way through many builders and things of that nature to get to the point where we are. And we found a great builder, uh, up in Santa Clarita, uh, Firefly Industries does great work and managed to get the, um, truck done for us in a f fairly short amount of time. Um, the project overall has been upwards of about two years now. Um, so it, it's, it's, I think coming this December would have been the, er, the, the two year birthday of the brainchild of Kung Fu Tea mobile truck in Valley Center. Right. Um, and, and all the process up until now was, um, you know, lots of red tape and, and, and lots of, uh, lots of learning really is what it was. I would say is, 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 you know, what, what made the project stall as it did, but you know, we, we overcome many, many obstacles, um, and was able to get, you know, a product and a, a truck that really serves the needs of being able to provide this beverage to the area. You know, uh, there aren't many trucks like it in the nation. Actually, we are one of two uh, Kung Fu Tea mobile trucks wow. in the nation. Okay. Wow. Um, we are the um, truck that is capable, though, of producing fresh tea all day long, fresh boba all day long uh, as we operate. And that's something that had been unseen before due to the... Um, the dynamic of, of what that business requires um, on the daily. It's a lot of water and, you know, a lot of ice and right. a lot of other things. For sure. Yeah, I so, didn't think about that, actually. Yeah, yeah, so when you when you look at it, most food trucks, you know, would have a, a small uh, generator to produce a small amount of electrical equipment. They got broilers and fryers and things like that. Uh, all of our machines run electricity. Uh, so we actually have a fairly large generator. The generator is what's keeping us out of business uh, today. Wow. Uh, we had to take a small break from the business. We've got the truck back up with the builder. Um, he's working through some um, uh, modifications to the exhaust system on the giant generator we have. And that's um, as soon as we get the truck back, we'll be back in operation here in Valley Center again. Well, fantastic. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that because I, I had a mango slush the other day that was mm -hmm. just right on the money. That was it? Yeah. So look, how did you even get to Kung Fu Tea? Because I know how I found it. How did you, I mean, you, how long have you been here in, in the States now? I mean, it's in, I mean, the States, I mean, in the mainland. Um, I've, from when I left uh, Hawaii, I moved to Washington State, lived there for a few years, had an opportunity to move down here with some buddies. We started a marketing company down yeah. here in San Diego. Yeah. Uh, that was back in 2011. So I've been here for now just about 12 years. Uh, my partner has lived here for a few more years than that. She's been a resident of Valley Center for about 15 years now. Okay. Um, and so she, local, yeah, local. She, she's um, local, local. Locals by now. only, right? I think 15 years counts already. Yeah, yeah, almost. So. Almost. Yeah. So she, you could say that of her. Um, she, she's a, a, a horse girl. She, yeah. she, you know, rides and trains horses. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, uh, works through their development from a uh, very young age into the uh, world of jumping is what yeah, she trains cool, her horses. Cool. Yeah. So she, she's been around out here um, in Valley Center, you know, running that game for a little bit. Um, we met here probably about six years ago now okay. um, and, and have been happily together ever since. Yeah. And we were the ones who were sitting around thinking somebody needs to bring boba tea to Valley Center. Yeah. Um, and as we were sitting around, we then realized we should bring boba tea to Valley Center. Awesome. Uh, how that connects us to Kung Fu tea is, is we started doing a lot of research on, on franchising and things okay. of that nature. But Kung Fu tea is the tea that got me and actually Jenna more into boba tea. Okay. It was, it was a, um, 
the San Marcos location was yeah. on my way home when I worked in Encinitas. There. Okay. And uh, when I was working in Encinitas, coming through uh, to Valley Center, I knew that if I was in trouble, I'd always bring home a boba tea and usually get out of it. Okay. So that, okay. that, that was what it was. And, and of all the other stops here along the way um, that I could have stopped at, Kung Fu Tea really became the the spot for us. The it was, go-to. It, it yeah. was the flavor, and I think the way you reference the the quality of the product, yeah. um, it's it's their brewing method that really brings that flavor out in the tea. Uh, okay. Other places seem watered down. It's probably because it is. We don't water our tea down. It's completely fresh. Yeah. You know, amongst the other um, ingredients that we use, uh, it, 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 it is a premier product versus the other ones I've had as well, and, and that's one of the biggest things that draw, drew us to a franchise with Kung Fu Tea. I think you made a good choice because yeah. it's always my favorite mm -hmm. and i i you know my my other kid my oldest son uh, he's not exactly as in um initiated as he might he loves the kung fu tea mm -hmm. but he doesn't want to make the drive so he goes to a local one this is down at the bottom of the hill mm -hmm. <sighs> this is a sad sad i mean it, look it, it is what it is but i don't know what anybody else is looking for in a blended drink mm -hmm. But I, I, I'm looking for potent. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking for something that's going to, you know, be disgusting. Mm -hmm. like it's, so, it's so strong. The flavor is so strong. I'm talking about something that is just sweet, tangy, tart. Uh, if, if it's watermelon, I want it to taste like watermelon. Mm -hmm. I want it to be watered down. Mm -hmm. And I, this other one we went to was just, it's that. It's that. It's just not. And it's, and it's, it's pretty, you know, fairly expensive. If you're going to be fairly expensive and it's just going to be okay. It's not okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. We feel the same way. And, and so when we kept doing our digging with all the other franchise opportunities that were available out there, you know, uh, they came, you know, highly ranked in a lot of these reviews of, sure. of franchises to get yeah. into. And, and as we started uh, to talk to the, um, the franchising team with uh, Kung Fu Tea Corporate, uh, you know, they, they were really interested in our project. Um, the concept here uh, to be able to do it like I said they had only done this once before and 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 they wanted to know how they can greater evolve the the machine itself so it can produce at their highest quality levels oh, yeah. and and through the, the time that we took to be able to get to this point like I said it was to make sure that we were putting out a premium product as good as you would have from the store oh, absolutely and um, you know I've, we've been to locations all over the nation now um, up and down California for sure um, uh, we spent some time on the East Coast in New York uh, for the training out there. Wow, okay. Visited them all over New York. You guys went deep. Uh, well, the, so the training was mandatory for the franchising deal. Yeah. You know, it was yeah. our, our two-week corporate training out there. Uh, a lot of time spent in their stores. Um, a lot of time, a uh, little time to get around New York City. Um, but uh, some time in upstate New York. We visited the one out there uh, near Ithaca um, and got to see, like I said, just the way a lot of these other franchisees had made their, their deal operate. Yeah. Uh, and then the, all of that information we took in along with the corporate team's uh, insight and, and, and knowledge um, got us to the point where we are fully pleased with the product that we got from our builder uh, that we can really do what we you know what what the brand is expected of yeah. is that yeah. higher quality yeah. tea you know yeah and so we're super happy like I said for for all that and 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 it's two, like I said, two years coming now. It was a stark realization that very first day we operated and had that very first customer, and we were like, "Man, we're here now," you know. Yeah. And and, and thankful, thankful yeah. every day for that for sure. Well, welcome, man. Really, because okay, look, I've been in Valley Center for about fifteen, mm -hmm. and it's it's changed so much mm -hmm. in that time that we've been here. As a matter of fact, I remember <laughs> I remember driving up here with my in laws. And they were considering moving out here with us. Mm -hmm. And we drove up to what was the newly developed uh, coal grade, or no, the newly developed Valley Valley Road, or Valley, whatever, what is it here? It's Valley. Valley Parkway? Yeah, Valley Valley Parkway, yeah. Because it turns into Valley at the bottom of the hill. Oh, right, so right, it's right. Valley Parkway here. In the, so we drove up the grade from down in Escondido, and, and my, my in-laws are just like, what are you doing? What are you doing out here? Because it was, we, I think if I, if I recall correctly, the day we came up was like a Saturday and it was just nobody but us on that road. Mm -hmm. Now it's changed you know, tremendously. Plus, you know, everything was very sparse completely. I mean, I think the only thing they had was the, the Valley Center Market. Uh, they didn't have the Chevron. They had Papa Bear's, mm -hmm. which was that spot right across the street. Mm -hmm. They had Napa. And then they had another market. And look at us now with the McDonald's. There's a McDonald's, 
Taco I mean, Bell on the way. It's it's it's. It, I mean, when when McDonald's came to town, I felt like okay, now we're we're in trouble <laughs> because we're going to become another major city now. You know, it's pretty serious. It <laughs> it's, is. It's changed quite a bit. And and the thing about it that, that kind of makes me concerned is that it's changed so much with so little change as far as the um, the population. Park Circle is that what's called Park yes. Circle? That Park Circle area. Uh, really has brought a lot of changes. Mm-hmm. You know, it's funny. I was talking to uh, somebody at one of the, I was trying to buy something off Craigslist or whatever, off in, and I went in there. The person lived in there. And they have a whole perception that people just don't like them. And I'm just, I don't, I don't understand. I, don't, I have no hard feelings against these people. I actually thinking to myself, welcome to the town. Um, you know, but people like, do like Valley Center the way it is. I mean, they like, you came to Valley Center because Valley Center is so awesome. Mm-hmm. You didn't come here to change it, you know? So if you're going to come and be a part of Valley Center, then I, I think everybody should be welcome. But if you're going to come here and bring L.A. here, nobody wants that. Oh, for sure. Not. You know, everybody wants it. Everybody wants Valley Center to just be Valley Center uh, with additional stores and market and all that stuff and Kung Fu tea now. Mm-hmm. That's what they want. They, they don't want you to come in here and start acting like, you know, you're living in L.A. Now, I, found, I felt the same way, actually, when I first, uh, my first interaction with Valley Center, I had a couple friends, actually, that I had... Uh, started the SEO marketing business without here. They ended up moving out here. Yeah. I stayed on the coast. Being a Hawaii kid, I want. I, I miss being by the water yeah. and and being able to see it every day. Yeah. And so I, I lived out in Carlsbad mostly for uh, the early part of my time out here. Okay. Um, and they were living out here because uh, one of the buddies was a horse girl and she did her horse training and it made sense for her yeah. to have the property out here. Yeah. And I would come and visit and I'd be like, man, what is this place? You know, it, it was it was a little yeah. bit off my radar. You yeah. know, Hawaii doesn't have mm. places like Valley Center. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, after um, spending a lot more time here, that homely feel, you know, I'm, you're out of the city. I think that's what people want to keep this yeah. place to be. Yeah. Um, and there, there's going to be evolution everywhere. And, and yeah. I think it's, it's, it's difficult to force any one way onto the matter. Not, yeah, yeah, sure. It's people, people will come. If you build it, they'll come. Sure. And, and McDonald's is probably a part of that, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's changed quite a bit, man. It's changed quite a bit. As a matter of fact, when, I was, when the kids were really little, I used to run them to the store or to the school. And there was just nobody on the road. Mm. So you can see how it's changed. But um, I don't know if I'm looking forward to the future of it, though. I'm concerned. Well, uh, you know, I think uh, I, I think that is what a lot of people feel, and that's why you have the, maybe the Park Circle folks that feel uninvited, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, I, I think I, I come across some um, disparaging comments about it uh, on the internet. You know, as we're okay. doing a lot more. I don't even media. look at them. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's tough to look at, and and I feel like the welcoming nature. It's it's difficult to say because you're going to feel one way about it no yeah. matter what. Yeah. You know, uh, and and it'll depend on the side that you're on, yeah. right? Um. I, I'm I'm an implant to Valley Center, Me too. but you know my yeah. girl's been here for a while, right? Yeah. But it, Valley Center is 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 a great place to be just because it gives you that release from the city if that's what you're looking for. T- totally. You know, uh, that the time in New York that I spent that two weeks yeah. up there, yeah. I walked around everywhere with my chin completely yeah. up, you know, yeah. and it was it was d- distracting to walk around because of of that that's just that concrete jungle that it is. Were you in Manhattan? Uh, yeah, downtown. Okay. Yeah, right that's in the middle beautiful. of it, around okay. the corner from the Empire State Building, yeah. um, is where we stayed. A few blocks up was uh, the training center that they had. And, um, you know, that was my first time in the Big Apple. Sure. And uh, I actually got to watch the Padres play at Yankee Stadium. That, that's, there. that's probably special, it was, right? Oh, man, that meant a lot. I'm a big baseball fan. Uh, I, I will claim the Seattle Mariners as my okay. team. Okay. Um, but I got a lot of love for the San Diego Padres. Okay. And so I was thankful to get to watch uh, them up there while I was there. Wow. It happened to be that they were in town when we were in town. And I would definitely have not uh, stopped uh, the opportunity to get out there for that. Um, the uh, How long were you in the Pacific Northwest? I spent about five or six years there. Okay. And so that was, uh, you know, a good time. I uh, My parents lived up there. They were stationed there when they were in the military. Okay. Okay. Uh, they went on to retire there after that. And um, they uh, lived in a small town outside of Everett. Uh, it's about an okay. hour north of Seattle area. Okay. It's a small yeah. town called Marysville. Yeah. 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 Uh, they're right off the five there. And um, so it was a small town, farm town that probably wasn't hardly on the map until Boeing moved in to Everett okay. across okay. the way. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, um, you know, real, real small town out the way. The parents offered me a place to stay. I was a young, broke college kid. Um, you know, the opportunity to go to school up uh, yeah. near them, live back with them. Uh, that gave me the opportunity to actually 
actually start my career with Starbucks and deep in that. Uh, Starbucks was a college job that I had actually started in Hawaii. Okay. I took that to the, the Starbucks motherland in Seattle, um, work there through management ranks and things of that nature, um, in multiple busy, uh, busy outlet mall stores. Yeah. Um, so I had a, had a great experience through Starbucks with the 13 or so years that I was able to work with them. Okay. Wow. Really? Yeah. yeah a lot, years. A lot of okay. time. Yeah. yeah. And it was a, it was something at, like I said, it started as a college job, but as it went on, I realized I could make a real career and they were, you know, pretty awesome to their employees, yeah. Yeah. stock options and all those yeah. perks that they came up yeah. with to really make their partners feel like partners fantastic. Yeah. Um, what was fantastic and, and the learning experience at, a, at the high level of, of what a food service type industry can for sure be, yeah was uh, was something that I, I hold dear especially there uh, actually brought that job down here with me to San Diego and continued on a few years uh, working through the Starbucks ranks out here and um, I also got into the car industry a little bit, started writing service okay. um, at a BMW dealership. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that was a fantastic experience as well. It, it, it was second nature to me to work with people and talk to people. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just, they weren't that mad about a $5 cup of coffee anymore. It was the $5,000 repair job that sure. came up. Sure. Um, but you know, still the opportunity to work with, I mean, hundreds of people on, on a level, you know, of service all through the day. It was, it was vast experiences. So if you count it up, I'm talking 20 years of, of, uh, uh, customer service interaction for sure. at, at, at a high pace, high volume, very stores. high level, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, all those companies, the companies I got to work for Starbucks and, yeah. and the BMW deal, they, 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 I mean, they're nationwide or organizations sure. that want to make sure their customers are happy worldwide. Really? It, it, yeah. Ex yeah. Exactly. You're right. I was, uh, I would, well, I'm kind of a sidebar. I, uh, was a barista for this long. Is that right? Uh, I was, yeah. yeah. I, I was probably 1995. I was about to get married mm -hmm. and, my, we, we needed some money for the honeymoon uh -huh. and I wanted to go big on the honeymoon. And, uh, my buddy tells me he was, he was working at the LAX as a bartender, but then the whole system there changed. So he, he said to me, he says, like, well, in order for me to be a bartender again, I need to go work at the, the uh, Starbucks because they're under the same company host, mm -hmm. I think is what mm -hmm. it's called. And he said, well, they said I can get back into the bar if I go work here. And I said, yeah. He says, he says, well, he says, you could probably make some really good money. You go back in the bar. I'm like, oh. So I went to work for Starbucks thinking that I was going to be a bartender at some point. But I just couldn't make it through the, the rigorous, the rigorous uh, work of a barista. Just I didn't have the patience because I was doing I had a full time job mm -hmm. and I was doing the, the barista -ing, mm -hmm. uh, in the late in the early evening mm -hmm. at nighttime. I wouldn't get out sometimes until midnight, unfortunately. Yeah. So it was it was taxing. But then to kind of work in that level of service, because I'm a big stickler for service, so I understand what the kind of pressure you'd be under, mm -hmm. you know, especially in a, in a busy place like LAX or something. You got a, you got a fast pace. You got people coming up, you know, barking about drinks. Um, I couldn't do it. I just, I, I wimped yeah. out. Uh, but I was a barista. It's funny. And then uh, I, I, I have some information about Pacific Northwest as well because I'm, I'm Native American and my tribe is in Centralia. Oh, is that right? And I, so I get up there occasionally. And uh, when you brought up uh, Everett, yeah, I've kind of been around there. Mm -hmm. It's very sparse. I mean, it's a kind of country, right, up there. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's off the beaten path. Like I said, it's the greater Seattle area, okay. right? So yeah. it, is, it is where the crowds start to thin a little. Yeah. Um, you know, Marysville itself was a kind of a small farm town. Yeah. Um, and uh, Boeing moved into Everett, and that's when things got big. I believe the Naval Station there um, in Everett as well, you know, is a big generator of, of yeah. you know, what you attract to yeah. the area. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, the tribe across the way was the Tulalip tribe. Uh, you remember that they have the big casino and outlet mall right on the other side of uh, um, the freeway from okay. Marysville. Okay. And uh, so I, that was actually one of the outlet malls I worked at uh, when I was with Starbucks as a manager okay. uh, was out there. And that was like I said, I mean, it was so busy. The last time I went back to that outlet mall, yeah. they put in a second Starbucks oh, in the mall in that Two. same outlet mall. That's how much. Just on the other side yeah. of the mall, there's another one now. And I, yeah. I was blown away when I went to go back and visit. Yeah. I was like, man, this might have helped when we were so busy right. <laughs> when I was there. Yeah. How long would the line be when you have like some out, of those signs? Out the door. Really? I, I, wow. I, that was more than more than likely, I would say that was the busiest one. Uh, there was one in the Ala Moana Mall, actually two in the Ala yeah. Moana Mall yeah. in Hawaii yeah. uh, there. Uh, I worked at those. Um, and another busy okay. one. Was, so, I mean, think about that for a second. Yeah. Did you ever get to the Second Street Cafe? 
That sounds very familiar. Yeah. I don't know if it's, I've it's ever been there. Right outside Ala Moana. No, I don't know if I've okay. ever been there. You, there's a second street right off by Ala Moana, isn't there? I, I, it's going to be around second the Avenue. corner a little bit. It'll second, be down the ways, I would yeah. say. Yeah, it's kind of, but it's close. It's close there on the side. Mm-hmm. Okay, the, I remember going there uh, with a friend because I, I used to work as a as a cook, mm-hmm. and and I'd heard that they had this great place called the Second Avenue Grill, there just outside of the Ala Moana shopping mall, on the side street, which I believe is Second Ave. Is it Side Street Cafe? Yes, side that's, street what Cafe. that's what it's called. That's what it's called. Yeah, no, I've been there okay. many times. Yeah, food is great. It's fantastic. Yeah, they yeah. had a uh, I think it was a ribeye mm-hmm. or a pork chop. Mm-hmm. It was a pork chop. They did a pork chop there. Uh, you know, the the other thing I remember that place for, besides their uh, killer fried rice that they do. Yeah. Um, okay, I want to see a second, second street. They also did a, a nightclub type atmosphere into the evening. Okay. And I was just of that age. Uh, to enjoy that. To enjoy that a little bit. Yeah. And it was very interesting uh, out there. But I remember being there for dinner and then, oh, the party's here afterwards. Okay. You know? Wow. And it was fantastic for that. Yeah, for sure. No, I, I went there because somebody recommended that's where chefs go. Mm-hmm. After their shift. Yeah, yeah. Very and, famous place. And I'm telling you, those, that pork chop that I had, because they took the, this giant pork chop and they made it into fingers. They made cuts in the chop so that it was kind of, you get that Maillard in between each of the pieces. Mm-hmm. And they served it with a sauce. I, I don't remember the sauce, what it was, but it was just so fantastically cooked. Mm-hmm. Everything, every inch of it had a sear on it. Mm-hmm. And I just remembered it so, so well. Uh, but I, I remember going to Hawaii many, 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 many times. So many times. It's kind of, yeah, it must have been 20 times, Yeah, you know, from here. So It's been a little while since I've been back home. I definitely got to make some time to get out there uh, sooner than later for sure. Um, it, it's, I mean, it's, you know, you, you, do you know when you get off the plane in Hawaii? I do. And you know you're in Hawaii. There's, you know, a, it's just, there's something about the air. There's something about it. There's a sweet smell it. to me. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if it's picake or if it's uh, plumeria. I don't know what it is. Just a combination of the soil and the water. Yes, it's a breeze. It's a warm breeze. If I recall correctly, you always feel like you're wearing linen. You want to wear linen because there's that breeze in there. You, lo- I love the smell of a fresh lay. Mm-hmm. When somebody, well, that sounds, that sounds weird. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, uh, somebody puts a lay on mm-hmm. you, and uh, then I always go looking for macadamia candy. Oh, got you it. You know, you got it. Got yeah, it. you got to take those home. Yeah. And uh, what else do I remember about Oahu? Man, I, I always felt like uh, the way the design of the of the airport, it kind of reminded me of something I'd seen in one of Elvis's movies. Mm. Uh, like when he'd done uh, one of his Hawaiian movies, mm-hmm. just had the kind of had a kind of a, you know, what, what is that flavor they, of architecture they have for the Arizona, the Arizona monument? It's kind of got that 60s kind of uh, mid-century modern kind of vibe. I would yeah, you can call it that yeah. for sure. I feel like the, air, the airport has that same vibe. Mm-hmm. A lot of koa, mm-hmm. you know, wood everywhere. Mm-hmm. It's kind of got that, the like, uh, what do they call that? The matting, that grass mats kind of as paper on the walls. Tapestry type. It's kind of got the, it's kind of a kind of, I don't know, I don't know how to describe it, but that's what it, I get from it. Well, that little botanical garden has got to be that smell because I know they got plumerias and other other local yeah. shrubberies yeah. in there. And I love it, it. Yeah, I love, if I if I have time in the airport, I stop in there just to take it in yeah. one more time yeah. before I leave, you know? Yeah, I had an experience like that uh, that was on par with that in the, in the Bahamas recently. Mm-hmm. And it just had that, and I'm a, I have a, a very good nose, so when I, the smell, it just smells of earth. It smells sweet. It smells like a hug, you know, it just, you know, and what did I want to eat there that I love so much? My, my nephew still lives there. He still lives in Oahu near Diamond Head. Uh, but I just remember, oh, you know what? Yeah. I don't remember. I remember Zippy's. Oh, always the Zippy's. Plate lunch mm-hmm. at Zippy's. L and L drive-ins. I never, I don't remember them. I mean, they're here now. I've seen a couple they're, of they're them. Now. Yeah, for sure. There's one in a Walmart, I think, out here somewhere. Yeah. The the one in the Walmart, yeah, they changed from, it used to be McDonald's, and now it's a L&L. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't, I've never had it. Is it delicious? Um, the ones back home definitely are, are, are what I was raised on, those plate yeah, lunches yeah. and things like yeah. that at the L&Ls. And scoop, of wa- those, scoop of rice? Yeah. Ray- Loco moco? Oh my gosh, yeah, for yeah. sure. That's all you need. It'll stick yeah. to your, you know, stick to your insides and, and get yeah. you through the day for sure. I want some char shoe. Oh yeah, that's definitely yeah. the good Char shoe sounds good right now. Yeah. Loco it, moco? You loco moco fan? Yeah, I, I just, yeah, I was just saying that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's a place, if you ever get to L.A., I don't know any here in San Diego. Now that I'm thinking about it. Do I know any places that are Hawaiian style? Uh, who do we got? The Terry Cafe. Terry is, Cafe. They're one of my favorites up there. Yeah. Did you get? Did you ever get there when Desi Relator used to play on Wednesday nights? Mm-mm. Okay. Uh, when my kids were little, 
uh, when we first moved to, we moved to Oceanside in 2001. Mm-hmm. And there used to be a place called Kai Sen. Mm. And a, a Hawaiian guy named Lane and another guy named Gary, they ran this place. And it was right behind, on Oceanside Boulevard, uh, where Boney's used to be. Mm. Or uh, the CHP office used to be on Oceanside Boulevard. Yeah, right there, where you get off the mm-hmm. freeway. There's a, there used to be a spot called Kai Sen, and that guy used to bring in hula dancers every Wednesday. Wonderful. He, he had a massage therapist in the corner that would do your shoulders, but you know, you pay him whatever they mm-hmm. charge. Um, we actually had a Hawaiian style party at my house in Oceanside. We'd had the whole backyard done, landscaped. Uh, it had a pool. It had this like, uh, we had put palm trees. We'd put as much tropical stuff, mm-hmm. bird of paradise, uh, flax, all that stuff, that real kind of uh, tropical vibe. We had this place, Haisen. Gary came over there. We had this uh, rolling bar. Yes. And he made, uh, we had an uh, all-you-could-eat sushi bar. Sweet. We had uh, some friends of these guys. Had, they were a hula troupe. And one of our friends was in the hula troupe. She came and danced. We had a place called, what is it called? Uh, Michelle Coulon Patisserie in La Jolla make three cakes, a chocolate, uh, something else. Nice. And then we had... We had something, a sushi bar. We had the hula dancers. We had the, the massage therapist. We had the massage therapist from the from the place. Massage therapist at the party. You got to let me know when you have another party. Yeah, this was this was so good because she was she was also one of the hula dancers, but she had a chair, one of those uh, mm-hmm. you know your your faces in the chair, mm-hmm. and she and you just go over there and sit at the chair, and she would give you a massage. But this was going on at Kai Sen at the restaurant every Wednesday. We would go. And we would have the most glorious time. We, we, people, you know, everybody was there. Kind of the, everybody went there the same time every week. And you'd know people sitting there at the bar. Everybody waved, hey, what's up? And it was a party, man. Wow, it was a party. That sounds cool. Yeah, sounds and cool. and so that and also that the guy, one of the, Nick, the son, one of the sushi uh, chefs, his mom owns that Hawaiian style supply spot in Carlsbad. Mm-hmm. It's on uh, Union Street or one of those mm-hmm. streets in Carlsbad. They they do nothing but like lays and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But uh, man, I have a long history of Hawaii, and you bring it up it makes a lot of memories. Right. Uh, one of my favorite things I ever had there was poke on the side of the road. Mm-hmm. The guy was making he caught the fish. He had a nice chest, and he just rolled up, and you get poke right there. Mm-hmm. That is still to m- one of my favorites. Uh, Taco poke. Mm-hmm. There used to be a place right there in the Alamo, no, Alamoana, in Hawaii Kai. Mm-hmm. It was a little mall, and they had just had like a sushi boy. Or whatever, get your rolls yep. or your or your um, probably by the food land right over there. I think that that's what it is. Yeah, and it was spam musubi they had. Got to and uh, local mocha. They had they all had all kinds of things, man. They had uh, uh, spicy tuna rolls, just quick yeah. uh, salmon that, skin rolls. That was the spot when we were going to the east for the beach. We used to do a lot of uh, body surfing. Yeah, out at Sandy Beach in Makahu. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right yeah, yeah. yeah. The corner I've, by the I've been to Sandy. Yeah, Sandy's long that, time though. Yeah, with the the sketchy shore breaks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we used to like doing that. And around the corner was a little bit more chill. Was Makapu by the lighthouse, um, and by uh, Sea Life Park out okay. there, right okay. around that corner. Yeah. And uh, that spot you're talking about with that Foodland parking lot was always the stop on the way yeah. and after for yeah. you know anything we might need. And fantastic. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you're talking about exactly. Another one of my favorite things to do in Hawaii was going to the Pali Lookout. Uh huh. Yeah. I remember going there one time. The breeze was so strong. Mm-hmm. It held me up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I stood up on the wall. Yep. And the breeze was blowing, and I just stood there while it. I le- I leaned out over the the cliff, mm-hmm. and I remember just laying there. And the the breeze was so strong, it was pushing me. Yeah, I loved it, man. Yeah, I take I loved- all the tourists. I mean, that's an easy spot to take them to. You Fantastic. see a part of the island that you don't yeah. get to see, and, yeah. and I actually uh, when I was in uh, at Hawaii Pacific University yeah. out there, yeah, uh, I was a science pre med major, and so we were operating mostly in the science campus. Was up um, up on the Kaneohe side. Okay, I would come down the poly all the time to yeah. get to the downtown campus yeah. there, and so that was my lifetime that I, I, I learned more about you know the poly and just in being yeah. up in that nick of the woods because I was always a, a Pearl Harbor kid being okay. a military brat, okay. right? Okay. Went to Radford High School, yeah. graduated. Okay. I don't know, Ra- I don't know it, but I- right down the road from the Aloha Stadium. Okay. Is the the uh, Radford High School there? Uh, you know, only a few miles. So the Pearl Harbor kids and all that went there. A lot of military brats, still some okay. local okay. presidents and whatnot. Um, but that area of Hawaii is where I grew up, and then now to be in in the 
downtown of uh, um, uh, Honolulu was was definitely a different experience just going a little ways away. And, and yeah. it's it's funny to go back to uh, the island. And now, obviously, we got cell phones and, and, and maps. And I don't remember all the roads quite the way I used to. Right. And um, listening to Siri tell me street names is the first funny thing. Yeah, that's uh, got to be right. Yeah. But yeah. also, the really funny thing is is realizing that we're talking, uh, you know, a 45 minute drive from one part of the island to the other is, is maybe about 15 to 20 miles tops. And, and you, you drive for 45 minutes in, in the, you know, continental U S yeah. you can get about 45 miles away at least Yeah. in, in Hawaii. If you know, that was 20 miles to get me from a to B and it was, you know, the 45 minutes. And it depends on when you go during the day too, right? Be- oh, always. And yeah. you're just beating your car up because I know those hills, the grades, mm-hmm. and then everybody slams on their Stop brakes and go, you're just yeah. burning your brakes up. Yeah. I remember seeing some, I, I, this is a stupid thing. I remember seeing somebody's fire, the brakes caught on fire on one of those times oh, yeah. coming over the hill. Yeah. 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 But down the poly is pretty steep. Yeah. I, I have so many fond memories of, of Hawaii though. Cause I remember staying in uh, Waikiki. I remember going to my last time I went, my sister, because she's native, they sent her every year, every other year on a trip. It's usually in Hawaii mm-hmm. and Oahu. And I remember going there and ha- finding the most incredible pastry in one of these hotels in Waikiki. They have a great, okay, I can't, I wish I knew the name of this place. Gosh, I should even tell the story. It's a beautiful hotel. Beautiful hotel. It's all wood inside. You probably, probably one of many right off of, uh, it's, not, it's not Kapiolani. My, I was going to say the Kapiolani Hotel, Queen Kapiolani. D- um, the, this one is like two stories. It's high is ceilings. Is it the pink one? Is it the Sheridan? Oh, you there? mean not? It's not on the sand. No. Okay. Yeah, it's on the one, mm-hmm. the inner street. What's the inner street? Is that Kapahulu? The that might be the one. It, it's either Kapilani. I know that the main road uh, there. Okay. Uh, I wish it I doesn't really matter. Back. But it's I, been so long since I've been. Yeah, home. yeah, yeah. Hard to say. But I was there, and they had this, the most incredible pastries, morning pastries like breakfast buns. Mm-hmm. It was just a fantastic spot. Yeah. No. I mean, every, everywhere in Hawaii, like I said, it's it's. I, I, I've actually, since uh, COVID, I had gotten to go back. Yeah. And um, I think the bummer uh, for me was going back and seeing a lot of those food places that I absolutely always will go to hit, yeah. not being there. Yeah. You know, I did notice some um, advertising on, you know, keep our kitchens open and, and, and ordering uh, delivery as the pandemic had changed the way restaurants had to operate. And and seeing uh, the, the following in Hawaii still try to keep those restaurants alive by, or, you know, ordering delivery because they couldn't do sit down deals. Yeah. Um, you know, it was, it was, it was lovely to see. And I, I, you know, I hope there were many that benefited from those efforts. Um, it's, it's still sad to see the ones that couldn't make it through and, and, and realize now that they, it wasn't yeah. worth for them to be in business yeah. anymore. Those little spots are usually the best though. Always, always. The ones that have the, the my buddy had a, a spot that did nothing but poke, mm-hmm. poke sell. Like we have 10 different kinds of poke. Mm-hmm. I remember going to Roy's there. Was it Roy's or is it Roy's on Kauai? Mm. There's the Roy's um, was right there on the main road just west of Alamana area. Okay. And uh, that one had closed down a little while ago. And then I believe now it's a uh, um, Liliha Bakery. And okay. I, the way I describe Liliha Bakery is I was eating there since before I was born because that was the place that my mom and my aunt used to go all the time. Okay. And, and so when I was a kid, I just remember going there for the Cocoa Puffs, which okay. was a super f- popular thing at Liliha Bakery. Okay. Uh, they were a really small one out there in Kalihi, just a little bit more west okay. of a uh, town area. And um, uh, that little uh, Liliha Bakery, I mean, it was, it was a bench seating that was maybe about 16 or 20 feet long. Yeah. And, and you come, you stand in line until the spot opens up, the c- guy's cooking it right in front of you. Yeah. And, and then you hit the bakery on the way out the door, too, for the Cocoa Puffs and the, the Pondesal all and the uh, all the good stuff the ensamadas you know and, and malasadas as well uh, malasadas of course yeah for sure and so I, I remember my aunt would always have something in in the kitchen from there uh whether it was the sweet bread loaves or the pastries um and and so as i got older and i was able to go out and and be about uh you know as a college student that was like always the the last stop you know with me and the buddies yeah uh maybe the first stop with the buddies who are coming to visit uh, and then when they expanded to the big Liliha Bakery is where the Roy's was, I believe. Okay. Yeah, right, right there near Aloha Tower. I had the best. Um, we spent an, an, I just spent my anniversary this last weekend. We went and painted the town in Hollywood uh, for the night. Thank you. 28 years, man. Woo. 
but we spent one of our anniversaries there and we went to Roy's and they took such good care of us. Even though I was being a little, because I made a reservation and I was being grub enthusiast at the time. And I went over there and I, I didn't know the one I went to. I don't know if, and I don't recall where it was, but it might've been the original one. Mm -hmm. The original one was a bit like a cafeteria, if I remember. Mm. There was, they got progressively nicer, you know, when they came to the state or to the mainland. But the one I went to was like, it was like a cafeteria. Even the lighting was kind of bright. Mm. And I was a little bummed out, if I'm honest. I went, I was like, you know, God, I, I was wished it was, I thought it was going to be something different. Mm -hmm. But they, they jumped so many hoops for us. Mm -hmm. I, I said, hey, do you guys have any candles? Because I wanted some dim lighting. They were like, no. And then, Five minutes later, he comes back with a candle. Hmm. He'd run to the store. <laughs> wow. That's impressive. I, I was just blown away. Yeah. And I forever, they have my, my admiration because they took, they, once they found out it was our anniversary, they just kept going, taking care of us as much as they could. It was fantastic. I have so many good memories of Hawaii, man. I miss it. I want to go now. Yeah. I want to go now. What's your, what's your, when you're there, man, what is your favorite food over there? Uh, I mean, it, it, it's home cooking or does it, it, it's gotta be Liliha bakery, uh, for sure is, is, is one of the top spots. I know that there are a couple of breweries out there that I like to go to, okay. uh, their food affair that goes along with that is, is delicious out there. Kona brewery is another one out there Never in the Waikai area, okay. uh, right by the Costco before the little shop that we were talking okay. about, yeah. uh, before you go up to Hanama Bay, uh, they're, they're a fantastic spot. So, I mean, that was you know, there are a couple few places that I definitely stop first. My grandma's cooking is, is high up on that list, too. No, um, maybe I should ask the question now. I ask, uh, try and ask as much as possible. I say, you know what? It's your last meal. Mm -hmm. What is it? Man, I, I, it'd be is back it Grandma's? Is it grandma's cooking? It, it would definitely be absolutely number one on my list. I would okay. say yes. Grandma's cooking for sure. What's, her, what's your favorite dish? I mean, there's so much that she does. Um, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a pretty picky eater. Not okay. going to lie. Okay. Uh, and, and the Filipino food is, is, is a particular taste, acquired taste. Um, but you know, there's nothing feels like home until I have my grandma's pancit. Okay. Um, what is that? The pancit is just their egg, uh, their, their glass noodles. Okay. Um, chicken, vegetables, things like that go into it, but it's, it's what I remember eating as a kid, you know, my grandma cooking for me. Okay. And um, um, obviously they got the lumpias and things like that that are that, that always are, are, are delicious. Makes me feel like I'm home. Do you ever go? Well, speaking of lumpia, do you ever get down to the Friday night market down here in behind Elote and Escondido? I have not. You should go down there if you're in the mood for, for lumpia. Right off the main road there? Right as you go down to the bottom of the hill. Uh, just as you passed, I think it's the post office. Yes, I know what you're talking about. There's a place called Elote. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Every Friday night, they have the Friday night uh, Escondido Market. I've never seen that. And there's usually probably 10 or 15 uh, tents in the back. Mm -hmm. I was there three weeks ago, had some incredible... Now, again, I understand that lumpia mm -hmm. is the savory version. Mm -hmm. But I what I like is the banana yes, equivalent I believe, there. I believe the, 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 it's toron. Okay. I believe that's I don't the name know. Of the, it. I don't know. I always yeah. call them lumpia. Yeah. I always get corrected though. Mm -hmm. But th those, I had those one time. Those, those blew my mind. You get the banana ketchup. I don't think I have. You're missing out. That's, okay. That that sets it off. It's a ketchup made from banana. Okay. And it has tomato paste and things of that nature in it. But okay. it's, it's it's like the staple that goes with with a lumpia for me. And okay. My, you know, I you know a lot of places have different versions of it. But man, you know that that turun with the uh, with the banana ketchup on it, just it's really yeah. okay. So let me ask you. So you're saying with the banana turun? Yeah. With banana ketchup. It sounds weird. I know. Okay. Yeah, but it, it's 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 the thing that goes with lumpia. Okay. There. Okay, but it's not just the savory ones. You're saying the sweet one, both, too. Yeah, both of them. Okay. I'll try it. I, I I've never tried it, but uh, it sounds interesting. I, I guess the what's throwing me off is the uh, tomato. The, the tomato, the, the tang of the tomato. I could see something going along with savory, but the banana, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Some, some I'm going to try it. We're going to try it out. Try. But anyways, they have them down there. Nice. We have, they also have a really great, uh, I think it's called Dr. No. He, they have a really good churro. Oh, tent yeah. down there, mm, really good. That, they sure. make a, a, a give you a nice, generous portion of churro. And they cover whipped cream and they put fresh fruit and they mm -hmm. really delicious. Uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, I, I those toron you just said those make that makes me want to go down there Friday. I'm gonna go down there Friday. Yeah. So, have you found your go-to uh, cuisine here in North County or in uh, San Diego yet? 
You know, I think uh, one of the first places that I was brought to when I first moved out here yeah. was uh, Old Town, uh, Fred's. Uh, I know Fred's. that's going to be a no, little wait, wait, bit wait. more. No, what's Fred's? Fred's right there in Old Town is... Um, uh, I mean, in on Grand? In Escondido? Or no, what are you talking about? I'm talking about... Uh, it was my friends picked me up from the airport okay. in Old Town, San Diego, okay. down there. Okay, okay. Right? And that, in that area off the main road there, there's a few different Mexican restaurants, but Fred's was the place that my friends knew, so it was the first place that we went coming off okay. the plane. Um, and that was my welcome to uh, San, San Diego yeah. when I first got yeah. here. And so that's still a place that I take people. Margaritas are great. Okay. And the um, you know the apps and things like that are, are, are fantastic. So it's an easy spot. It might not be as authentic as people might like, but it's, it's the easy one because I know it'll please palates, and I know know that you know it's it's nice nice atmosphere i've heard i've heard the word uh what you just said it you just said it was um what's got me thinking again authentic Mm -hmm. and i've also heard the word the best Mm -hmm. a lot i don't believe this is the best of anything i don't believe authenticity is uh 100 necessary i can see that because the problem is is that you know like someone says hey this is not authentic pizza or this is not the best pizza there's just too much pizza. Mm-hmm. How could you possibly have the best? And on top of that, uh, everyone's background's a little different. What if you come from Italy? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, you probably know pizza pretty well mm-hmm. or that kind of pizza. But there's now, I've seen all kinds of pizza now. Mm-hmm. I don't think there is a one style. And if, and if you were just sticking to New York style, for example, mm-hmm. You just you're gonna limit yourself. I tried to eat all of the pizza in New York. It was impo- I verify it is it was impossible. Okay, but I, I gave my gave my fair chance. Yeah. just because that's the thing out there, right? Yeah, and a bunch of great spots, uh, a spot or two that was worth hitting up the second time. Yeah. you know, yeah. on, on a lunch break while we were out there. Have you found you out here yet? Uh, you know the I think one of my favorite ones I don't think is around anymore, and I had it a long time ago in Escondido. An want, Escondido pizza spot? There, it was a. Okay. Um, it was uh, right there off El Norte, I'm pretty sure, by the IHOP. And it was a oh. Salvadorian place. Did you know that place? No. They did a killer pizza. There was something about the crust, the way they did this bread. Yeah. And there was something about that sauce, and and I, it just set it off for me. Really? The next time I went to go find them again, gone. they were gone, and I was super bummed. Um, I did hear of, uh, is it Mama Pizza? It's right there off of El Norte as well. Okay. Um, they're just down towards, uh, towards the seven 11 as you go on that small road past. The, okay. Uh, Broadway. Is that Broadway? Uh, after that one. Okay. It's, it's a road you can only, Oh, access. wait, wait, it's you have new. to flip that. U-turn. It's new. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You have to flip that U-turn yeah. to go back down the road yeah, yeah, past yeah. the Papa John's. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. And it, I believe that one was supposed to be, I don't know if it was a, a Greek or Roman style pizza, flatbread. And I went to go uh, hit that up when I was getting a car wash next door. Yeah. And they were not open that day. I was like, bummer. So that's yeah. the one pizza place I think I, I want to put uh, that is on the list to try. Okay. Mo, I guess Momia or Mamia. Mama Pizza, I believe. Yeah, I think was. that's what it is. Yeah. Have, have a orange M yes. logo. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I went in there. Pizza was pretty good. Oh, you've had that? I've had it. Oh, it's wow. a chain. It's like yeah. a, it's a chain oh, spot. Yeah. I did not realize. I didn't that. know either mm-hmm. until I asked, but they're apparently big on the East Coast or whatever, but just not right here. Mm-hmm. It, is, it is a chain, though. Okay. Got it. Yeah, I I struggle. I struggle because I'm always, you know. But let's get back to your Mexican uh, food situation. I found, well, first of all, there's a great vegan spot there right behind the Burger King on Mission. Mm-hmm. Uh, Burger King and there's Holiday Wine Cellar. Yes. Right there? Yes. Behind the Burger King, there's a place called Fatty's, mm-hmm. if it's still there. It was there a, a while back. Fantastic. Okay. Vegan. Okay. I also really like Fortuna's, Mm -hmm. which is on the corner of Washington and Escondido. I'm going to guess. I can't try to think. I think that's right. Washington, Escondido. used to be a Stater Brothers. Right there on the corner, there's a place called Fortuna's. They make mariscos and they make uh, aguachile. They make, um, they have a thing that I just keep on talking about. They have uh, tuna chicharron. Mm -hmm. I never had anything like it. I, I endorse it to the, it's a 10 on my list. Yeah. It's a 10. It's a, looks like deep fried marinated tuna chunks. Hmm. And I'm going to say to you, it's just everything you would possibly want. It's moist in the middle. Yeah. It's crunchy on the surface, uh-huh. flavorful. They give you a, a plentiful amount. It comes with uh, slabs of avocado, cilantro, purple onion, uh, tortillas. Uh, they have beers on tap. 
games on soccer other game. What is the name of that place? Four Tunas. Gotcha. Like instead of three, it's mm-hmm. four Tunas. Mm-hmm. That's a place. I just found a place called Terra Mar, mm-hmm. which is on, I think it's Escondido, on the way to Dell's Barber. You know, going, uh, is it, what is it there? Second I like Avenue? I feel like I've seen that place. It's, I think they have a, the logo's an octopus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, yep. That, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, I think that's right there. Is that not Grand? It's, no, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe it's on Escondido. Mm-hmm. It's three blocks over from, what is that? That's Grand, uh, no, Grand, and then there's Second. So it's Second from, it's Second Grand and then Valley, I believe. It's going south on a Escondido Boulevard, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. That is worth going to. Mm, Mexican. Hmm. Any particular dish that you had at that place that you... You know, I'm a big fan of uh, uh, chick. I do mostly chicken, okay. right? Is my my thing. Beef is uh, is is different for me. You yeah. know, uh, in terms of its its settlingness. Yeah, yeah. Um, but so I, I mean, I usually a good fresh chicken tacos. Okay. Um, I know that I like uh, definitely um, uh, a lot a lot more maybe the enchiladas. I think okay. are right up my alley. Okay. Any places like that you got? I would say Frida's Tacos. Frida's does Frida's Tacos. Mm-hmm. Uh, they do. A, I mean, everything they do well. Mm-hmm. I would definitely stop in for a visit at Frida's. And I believe those are, that's on Fig or, yeah, I think it's Fig. Fig and Valley. Mm-hmm. Right before you get to the old hospital. I, oh, okay, I know yeah. that area, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah there's a, play, a little liquor store across the street called the Bottle Bottle Shack. Or the, oh, yeah, no, I know exactly what you're yeah. talking about. Right down that so, road. Yeah, the, yeah. Mm-hmm. They, you can't go wrong there. Mm-hmm. I don't believe you can go wrong there. Got it. Uh, aside from that, don't know. Um, Okay, so you know what, man? Let's talk about let's talk about kung fu, man. Let's let's talk about let's talk about what you have going on there because yeah. we've talked about all that other stuff. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about kung fu. You know, like I said, what brought us to to this is is I mean, I you know, the last twenty years working in the customer service industry, um, and and you know, at, at the high volumes and whatnot that I've been a part of, I feel like this project kind of slipped right into my wheelhouse. Right. Well, the um, marketing, right? The marketing background, the Starbucks customer service. Mm-hmm. All of that was was the easy stuff for me. My um, my partner Jenna, uh, her background was in actual. Um, uh, it was IT engineering. Um, okay. She worked on stuff like um, uh, communication systems for uh, different police departments, sheriff departments, and, and okay. uh, b- different contracts yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, so she she had a background doing that. She uh, actually also helped run a family business back east when she was there. Um, and so she was kind of going to be the more books person. And, and obviously I had hope, the hopes and aspirations to be able to run my own store yeah. uh, at a functional level. Right. And so we, um, you know, we felt like with, with our talents combined, we could really make something like this work. We felt like there was a huge demand for it in Valley Center. You oh know? boy, you said a mouthful. I mean, you know, there, yeah, there, there's nothing here, brother. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's more stuff now, but. Oh yeah. I came across something, I think it was, uh, you know, early in this project that, you know, some 65% of consumer business leaves Valley Center. And okay. I mean, it, wow. I mean, everything is, yeah. is you know that wasn't here as 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 the date of that article. I'm sure that sounds more right. Well, With only a McDonald's. I mean, I don't know how much that might have shifted because that thing is always busy. Well, they just we just lost two more places. I think. Uh, oh, that's right. The the one that burned down the lake and the Lake Wolford Cafe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they, that place uh, was yummy. Yeah. No, and it, it so with with such a demand here, you know, being local family, we felt like that this was something we can bring to the community, um, and and so like I said, with all all the work that we've been doing, it, it, it's been such a process. But getting to this point now, we're so, so very thankful. Uh, well, look, uh, before you go any further, mm-hmm. I want to tell you I am so happy you're here. And I'll I help if I can help you in any way. Let yeah. me know. Oh no, definitely appreciate it. And that's I, you know I didn't realize that was something I was going to rely on so heavily. Is is the the Valley Center population accepting us? Right. Okay. I've already had many customers repeat. Uh, a lot of faces that I've seen more, yeah. more than once. Um, a lot of people interested, and then a lot of new people every day too means cool. something as well. Cool. Right. Cool. Cool. So you know somebody who's never seen it uh, before, I'm still walking away happy, sucking down their drink is 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 enlightening to me. Being able to do it now for myself and 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 you know my partner as well versus you know these big corporations that we had you know always I had always worked for in the past yeah. I think is is like the American dream right that that's a, that's what they talk yeah, about absolutely and um, I think you know being able to get to this level like I said where we're functional um, and and being able to provide a service that is 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 so welcomed here in the community um, I 
we, we couldn't be obviously more blessed. I mean, this is something that, uh, you know, with, with all the work and everything to get here now, uh, you know, the community is, is the only way we're surviving at all. And, and I, I wish we didn't take this long to get here. And, but uh, I'm, I'm glad that, you know, the, the, the response has been overwhelming, you know? Well, don't, don't feel bad about the, uh, the time because I've, I've heard recently, and this is applying to me, everything happens for a reason. It's true. I don't, I'm not that patient to be able to believe that uh, oftentimes, yeah. but I've had, I mean, look, I mean, I'm doing this. I'm, we're, we're, you and I are both products of, mm-hmm. of that. So, yeah. uh, yeah, I used to be an IT guy a long time ago yeah. and I've had various careers since, but this is by far the, my favorite thing to do ever. Yeah. You know, I used to do it a lot. Just go to someone's house and do it. Yeah. So to do it now and, uh, you know, try and make it into something that I can do for a living. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a dream. Yeah. So I think, I think being able to answer to myself is, is, is the boss, right. Yeah. And, 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 and knowing that the, the end product is directly flows through me. I, I know that I can provide the product at a high level. You know, I know that we can do what's right, you know, for, for the customer on every level, cause it's, it's going to be my fault or not right one way or another and I, I i think with the experience i have in, in the customer service industry I, I i like i said it was second nature to me i'm i'm impressed every day and I, i'll give her props uh but jenna you know like i said was this was not quite her forte you know she doesn't have an immediate background in in, in this food this type of specialty beverage service um but she's stepped her game up she's you know definitely a major part of the 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 movement and the the project wouldn't have got this far without her for sure, sure. sure. Uh, and love her every day for it. And, and I think, you know, one unintended consequence is I feel like our, our relationship has grown so much stronger. Um, and I, you know, the, everything that we have, have worked to build now and, and finally seeing, uh, you know, the fruits of the labor is, is something that is in and of itself overwhelming. Uh, you know, she, she's stepped her game up completely, um, and, 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 you know, does things that I didn't know she was capable of doing. I'll, I'll be honest, you know, in, in so many levels and, and then to do it with me, uh, you know, in, in terms of, uh, the, the teamwork that we have that has grown significantly over the course of this project. Um, it, it means a lot to me and, 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 you know, the time we put together it also, you know, you said, how long have you been with your wife? 1995. Man, that's a ways. Mm. That's a ways, you know. Mm. And, and, and well, no, actually, 87, if you want to call all of these. All of it, huh? Yeah. yeah, that's right about almost when I was born. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good amount of time. And yeah, you, know, you find time. somebody that, you, that can put up with you. Uh, yeah. And vice versa. It, it is absolutely no. vice versa. It's definitely a two way street. It, 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 it has to be. And, and I am thankful every day that she, um, she puts up with me, uh, because I, I, I know that's not easy. You know, uh, you know what, man, it, it, I, I guarantee you, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't want to get too far into a, 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 a couple's counseling, of course. but I will touch on the fact that if, um, and you didn't ask for my advice, mm-hmm. but it is hard to wrangle in two people's uh, lives into one. Mm-hmm. And, and there's a lot of sacrifices that have to go on, you know, um, living by the coast or living in the mountains. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, what kind of car you want to drive? What kind of, how do you want to live? What kind of house you want to live in? Do you want kids? You don't want kids. How do you raise them? All those questions, man. It's a, it's a, it's an ongoing thing. Absolutely. You know, so. I, I expect no less. And, and just to say that it's a matter of the ride we've been on together, uh, to get us to this point, to, to really pull out a, a situation where we, you know, are, are serving our community, yeah. um, and serving a community, a product that obviously was, was desired upon, um, you know, making us feel like we, we, you know, we, we did what we thought was right. And, 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 and Hey, look at that. It, it was, it wasn't a bad guess, yeah. you know, yeah. and, 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 and here we are today. Um, so, you know, just props to her really, uh, to be able to, you know, get to where we are. Um, especially considering her background wasn't quite this, yeah. you know, easily. So. Well, look, I wish you well, you know, uh, again, whatever is meant to be is meant to be. It's true. So, you know, you know, uh, there was a, the priest at the wedding that I, my, my wedding, he said one thing that I just always sticks with me. Mm -hmm. He said, water your love. Mm -hmm. And I think that is come in handy because, you know, if you don't pay attention to it, something like if you have a plant Mm -hmm. and you don't water it, you don't pay attention to it, it dies. Mm -hmm. It's, It's life. Everything is that way. Yeah. You know, I wish the only thing that doesn't die is the weeds out in, out oh, in Valley my Center. Goodness, yes, I know. you know what I mean. That's you, been harder to get to uh, recently with the truck yeah, going. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. still there. You <laughs> wish, you wish 
that those things would die. Yeah. Everything else, if you don't water it, dies and oh, dies. Goodness. But the weeds, no matter what you do, man, yeah. they just keep coming and coming. Oh, yeah. That it's, great rains that we had man, this last I don't season. Know. I have no idea what it is. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it's nonsense. Yeah. I just, I wish it would go away. So look, uh, so look, man, tell us a little bit before we go, tell us a little bit about what you got going on at Kung Fu. Tell us about some of the drinks, if you have them handy in your mind. Uh, tell us about, you know, what, the, what should people know about Kung Fu in Valley Center that would want to make them want to come? So uh, the thing about Kung Fu tea, like I said, it, it was the overall quality of the product, you know, the hardiness and, and the uh, flavor and feel and, um, and the consistency amongst all the stores that we went to. And, and so bringing that here is, is definitely a, was a big part of it. But, you know, the, the things that I think Kung Fu tea does the best besides the quality of the product is, is, is their marketing, right? They, they have a, 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 they got their app right? You can find us on the app. Uh, we're working to turn on the functionality where you can order, uh, through us on the app. Uh, we just want to make sure that we can, uh, basically handle the business flow that we're attracting, uh, at our doorstep. But, uh, in the future do look to turn on the apps where you can order from us. Uh, ordering through the app is, is like any other businesses ordering through the app and, and you get points and, and you score bubbles and, and you achieve a belt status, right? Really? You start as a white okay. belt, move up okay. the ranks to a black belt. Um, I was a black belt, uh, not too long ago. That's why I, it was obvious that I loved the brand so much cause I was going there a bunch. I um, think I might be a black belt too. I don't, maybe, maybe a blue belt. I don't know, but I'm, I'm, I'm up there. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm you up can there. score those bubbles and, and, and the rewards that come through that, you know, just like any other loyalty program is what it basically yeah. is, um, is, is, is beneficial for the, uh, obviously the company, that's why they do it. But for the customer as well, if you're going to save, you know, 10 or 15% or whatever yeah. that number ends up being, um, by using the app, it's, it's, it's a functional way to uh, stay in touch with the customer as well and yeah. things like that. And so, uh, you know, that was one of the things, uh, the other things that drew us to the brand was their capabilities with, with that aspect of it. Um, and, and, you know, right now, really the, the main thing in mind is getting the generator situation resolved. Um, yeah. you know, that, yeah. that, that was, that was a huge speed bump. Yeah. Um, but you know, still online, uh, you know, on our social media accounts, we, we still got plenty of support, you know, a lot of concerns. I've had other business owners, uh, reach out to me concerned about our situation. And, sure. you know, we had briefly spoke with them when they stopped in the shop one day, um, and to be checked on by, you know, one of the other mobile truck businesses around, yeah. uh, you know, I thought that was super generous of her to, to, to share her thoughts and, and share her, her wisdom in the business. Um, cause it is something we, we learn every day. I've always, I've never worked on a mobile truck before specifically yeah. Yeah. and to, to be able to make the, make things work. Um, and, and with the support of the community has, has been so great that we know that, um, it's something we, we want to keep working hard to have available for the, uh, the community. Um, so as, we, as soon as we get the generator going, I know that we're going to be continuing our soft opening phase. Um, that's going to be at least another week or two, uh, after we get, uh, up and running. Um, you definitely visit us for that. We're going to be running some promotions there, uh, with, with, uh, toppings and different drinks and things like that. Um, so you'll be able to see that. We'll make sure to post that on all our social media accounts. Um, and then following that we would are at this point looking to have the grand opening sometime in November. Uh, we'll have the corporate team come down. We'll, we'll make a big deal out of it. Uh, probably, you know, uh, get, get the word spread through other channels and avenues. Um, and, 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 you know, really fully integrate this business into the company once we've worked through some of the growing pains. And, and the logistical issues. Yeah. Well, well if, hey, look, if I can uh, help with that promotion, let me know. Um, you know, I have a nice website and things, and if you, you know, want something posted, let me know. I'm more than happy to do it for you. Yeah, no, it's, it's something, like I said, we relied on all, all of that extra support, and, cool. and, and it's not something I expected to be come to me so readily. You know, getting to meet you and getting to meet, yeah. you know, the other business owners in the area that yeah. just stopped by to say hi, yeah. uh, it, 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 it made me feel immediately accepted, not just as a, um, as, as a shop that's slanging some bobas, you know, on yeah. the block, yeah. um, but, you know, as, 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 a, as a piece of uh, the Valley Center community as a business um you know it, it's 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 nice to tuck in nicely with with all the all our friends around you know that 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 you know we'll see us we'll be seeing us every day right i mean you know constantly passing by uh the people that are in and out of valley center uh and all those people now get to you know have a little treat here and there sure you know sure. as as they come through the town and and don't have to venture all the way out in, in, into escondido for anything so are you going to be able to at some point put any kind of signage or any one of those uh, flags or any of the stuff on the on Valley? 
Yeah, so I, I wanted to make sure before I did anything like that that it was good with the county, right? I didn't want to be, you know, ruffling any feathers. Sure, those, don't they, do that. They call them, yeah, they call them feather flags, sure, right? Sure. Is we we had that in mind, so we we did uh, grasp uh, some of the design work for that from uh, uh, Kung Fu Tea Corporate. Okay. So we're looking to get that out. That that's more than likely going to be out come uh, time for our grand opening. Cool. cool. Just that a- added visibility because we get that that screen there. That yeah. like, The gas station that's coming now. Yeah. When when we first started this project, uh, it was it was open pad and and the construction had just laid and there wasn't that big green fence i think you would have been more readily been able to see us from the main road um i think we barely peek over that now and so i even even you barely saw us right as you're passing by yeah just all i saw was kung fu tea and because i know that i'm very familiar with the the Mm -hmm. fonts and all the logo i'm very familiar because i just go there so much Mm -hmm. uh but i when i saw it i was just like that can't be Mm -hmm. what is what? Mm what oh wait is that a delivery truck what is that and then we drove over and we're like, oh, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and I hadn't had one in a while, speaking of it. You know, speaking of the drinks, I'm, I'm really kind of ignorant now if you really want to break it down mm-hmm. of what it is beyond the mango slush, mm-hmm. the strawberry milk, mm-hmm. and the jellies. So I, I would say if you were to break it down um, in, in more in depth, right, there, there are going to be different categories of drinks. Um, a lot of the drinks, the milk teas and things like that are, are standard. Um, uh, now, let, can I stop you and say that? Because mm-hmm. they're not standard to me at all. Gotcha. Uh, when I think of the of milk tea, I've, the only place I ever had a, a milk tea, quote unquote, was at a place in Pasad- Pasadena called Bubble Tea. Mm-hmm. And they, they serve the, the milk teas in various you know, flavors, but they serve them in these big 32-ounce deli cups. So you get a, a large portion of it. Hmm. They just opened up the, what is it, the Dutch Brothers down below? Yeah, yeah. And I don't even know what they do. I had one of their drinks and, you know, it, I, it's fine. Yeah. It, I wasn't blown away by it or anything. Mm-hmm. And I did understand the lines. I, mm-hmm. I tell you that. I know. I did understand all that. Yeah. And I was down there and I, I, I had a couple, maybe I've had maybe three of them now. Mm-hmm. But I'm still I'm not sure what's really happening. Why, you know, what's the hubbub? But maybe I missed it. You know, and, and, and when it came to Kung Fu Tea... I immediately fell in love with that mango slush. That was my go-to. Mm-hmm. And I didn't really venture on beyond that. But my son, my younger son, Damien, loves the strawberry milk with the, the mango mm-hmm. jelly. So I started having that occasionally. But as far as the teas are concerned, I'm completely unaware mm-hmm. of what's really the in and out of that. So if you, so beyond just tea, mm-hmm. what else, what are they doing with it? What's going on there? So the... Each tea is, is handcrafted, right? Okay. Uh, it starts with a base. Usually would be the tea. Uh, the um, style of milk that goes in it can vary. Okay. Um, and then, but there are four main teas. There's an oolong, a, a black tea, a green tea, and a Thai tea. Okay. And those teas are then mixed with whatever flavors, whether milk or um, not, yeah. uh, f- different fruit flavors or not. Um, and, uh, and and shaken up, is, it goes through a process of shaking, get all those flavors incorporated, okay. right? And then you get whatever toppings you wanted, whether it's boba or the jellies or the popping uh, bobas and things okay. of that nature. Okay. Those are the toppings. Those yeah. are the, the, the little gummy bears almost kind of at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, the... the it, it pleases many palates on some level because you can go fancier, you can go classic, right? Classic might be a milk and a tea and, and, yeah. and a little sweetener yeah, yeah, yeah. and a, maybe just boba topping. Yeah. Or you get fruitier with some of the punches. Um, my favorite, like a white grape punch, right? Has a okay. little, little bit of the white grape flavoring, a green tea mixed up. And okay. then you, you put whatever toppings you feel okay. is, is worthy in there. Mango is definitely a way up on our list. Um, okay. That's something that is, is pretty now, popular. Which mango? Yeah, mango okay. is. Uh, we got something really great coming. I think it's going to be a huge hit here in the um, uh, southwest corner of the U.S. Okay. With uh, maybe, I don't even know if I should say it, but uh, tahine and chamoy. Okay, okay. Okay. Uh, it, it may be a topping here soon, um, and I know that it'll be a hit out here. I know that I love it myself. It's something I've 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 okay. come to love living out here in in, in the the San Diego area. Um, so that that could be on its way here shortly, and I know that that'll be absolutely delicious. Um, those are going to be in the slushes. Yeah. Um, and the mango is it'll be almost a, a derivative of the mango slush, and I think it'll fit right in nicely. And I like tahine. Yeah. I don't love it. Yeah. Some people like tamarindo and they like all that that chili and just blast and I just it. don't do it. I don't yeah. get it. No. I think there's a time and a place. 
There's a time and a place. I don't, you know, look, I, I don't know what time that is, but what I think of uh, that mango slush with tahin, mm-hmm. I just, it has to be some, something in it. Mm-hmm. I want some, you know, maybe a, by the pool, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you know, in, mm-hmm. in Mazatlan or yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what I'm getting. Salt, lime, mango, tequila. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what I think of when I think I of that. I feel you on that. And I think this will be that, that, uh, uh, this will be the kid friendly version yeah. of something like yeah, that yeah, for sure. Yeah, man. Um, but you can always take it home and, you know, yeah, you can uh, fix, <laughs> fix it up however you want. Exactly. Okay. Um, but, uh, so that's going to be a big thing. Uh, well, also slushes are the other major category, okay. right? My um, favorites. And that's yeah. what got me into boba. Okay. You know, the Oreo yeah. slush is what got me in there. I wasn't, you know, sold no. on all the different milks and teas and, 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 and fruity flavors right off the bat. But I mean, how do you, can you mess up an Oreo thing, right? Well, Maybe. well talk to me about it because I'm not familiar. Yeah. I, I, are you saying it's a, it's a shake? Or it's a, a, a slush. So any drink that we blend with ice, we'll consider a slush is, okay. is what's on our menu. But it's got milk. It's a milk base. Uh, not all of them okay. will. The mango that you like to enjoy. Well, I meant the Oreo. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. The, the, there is a milk base to the Oreo, okay. um, blend it up with obviously the crumbs, uh, some other flavors and yeah. toppings and some ice, yeah. um, get it together. And whether you like the, the boba toppings or anything, uh, you okay. know, uh, to go with it is up to you. But that's, that was the first time I tried a boba. Uh, you okay. know, the, the bubbles, the actual tapioca pearls that, that, uh, uh go in the drink. Now, can and, I stop you there and ask mm-hmm. another question about that, that, uh, that Oreo? Is it, um, like ice milk? Is it cap- like a heavy consistency, like a slushy kind of thing? Or is it more? The way it ends up blending out with the ice and the milk and the other flavors that go into it, um, it ends up being kind of like a, like a, a milkshake almost. Okay. Right. Is the texture creamy, density. Or rather creamy than more so than. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. the, um, Let's see. The that one's going to be a, for sure a big one. I know that also. Like the pistachio almond is another pistachio favorite. Pistachio almond. Yeah, that's a new flavor. Okay. That one, that one's just come out. But that one's pretty popular. Is that milk based as well? Uh, that one will have a milk base okay. to it. Yep. Um, the other one without a milk base that is up on my list is definitely the blueberry lemon. I've never had it. That one's a good one. See, yeah. That one's not on our main menu. Uh, okay. We have it on the the added items on our menu. I gotta uh, card. Try it. Yeah, that that one's one to try if you're not into the milk, you know. And so we have those yeah. options, obviously that, yeah. that 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 span many palates, right? Whether, okay. Whether milk or no, tea or no, um, you know, lots of options there. Tell me if you have an answer for this, because I mean, this is not in the same wheelhouse. But what I fell in love with recently was the Starbucks version of a. I don't know what they call them. You would know, the the cooler. Is it a cooler? Maybe the, are they the refreshers? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This one here, the one that I'm, it, I can't get enough of. I mean, I have to stop. Mm-hmm. Is the dragon fruit one? Yeah, that one's yeah. That one I knew that would be a hit everywhere when they when I first saw that first hit their menu. Yeah. Is it uh, drang, mango dragon fruit? That sounds right. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, I was hit on their uh, refresher drinks was uh, the strawberry acai. Okay. That My one, son was that, the, that one got that me. One. Yeah. yeah. That one got me. I'm I don't know why, but that dragon fruit has such an amazing color, mm-hmm. and it for me just the color alone is so striking mm-hmm. and then the flavors are just crazy good yeah yeah the color is something else for sure that'll attract so the drink cool. by itself yeah. yeah do you have something along like a uh, drink in that line kind of tangy sweet like that colorful you know, yeah, well, the mango does that uh, kind of for you, I would say. It's a mango green tea. You know, okay. it, it comes with the mango jelly already. Okay. Um, that one's kind of an easy flavor to Are get Are you sure to. you're not open today? Because we got to get over there. I, you know, I wish we were. Yeah. I wish okay. I could have brought yeah, some yeah. today. I'm you just bum- get my bum- stomach is going, mm. bum- we couldn't. Okay. Um, I think another um, kind of fruity flavor that's really popular um, is the kiwi. Uh, kiwi. comes with some chia seeds. Kiwi. Yeah, kiwi. Now, kiwi is kind of, uh, as it breaks down, it blends. Mm-hmm. It, it kind of makes it viscous, a little mm-hmm, mm-hmm. thicker. In the smoothie ones, those are good um, uh, for sure. And then I think the other major hitter is a guava. If you want that more tropical flavor okay. and things like that. We also have a Caribbean yeah. breeze yeah. Uh, slush. You know, See, like, I'm weird with guava mm-hmm. because in my, in my estimation, there are two mm-hmm. guavas. Maybe there's more. Maybe there's over a thousand of them. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I grew up with... A pineapple guava, mm-hmm. which is the green one with the yellow, kind of a yellowish white mm-hmm, interior. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then there's, I grew up with the one that the starts out as green, mm-hmm. but then it turns bright yellow mm-hmm. and has a pink the inside. innards. Yeah. 
And those, for me, all I remember was going into my grandmother's kitchen mm -hmm. and they'd be sitting in there in a bowl mm -hmm. and they give off such a weird, pungent, acrid smell yeah. that it almost makes me gag. There, okay. there is a smell about it, but man, okay. when you blend it up in a smoothie, we had them growing in my grandma's backyard. The yellow with the pink in the middle? The pink in the middle one, okay. yep. And my, my, my baby brother, he's 15 years uh, younger than me. Okay. And I just remember being in high school and this this one-year-old kid was was demolishing these guavas. Like he, okay. he would just he would not stop eating them to the to the point of being sick you know yeah and and so guava always had that memory with me growing up but man you, you mix it up in a slush maybe some mango and and some other uh, toppings okay. in it and it, 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 it reminds me of home just the same i'm gonna have to come and try a few different ones because the only, as i said my my real familiarity is the mango slush mm -hmm. and and i used to start out with mango boba mm -hmm. but then i went to mango slush then i went to the what did you see did you call the other one the other when they got rid of the mango slush, there was another one. It was called the uh, Nav. Oh, the Nada Jelly. Yeah, yeah. That right. one. There's coconut flavor there to it. Co co I didn't coconut get that. Pine coconut pineapple, I believe, okay. is what that jelly's meant to be. It was good. Yeah. I just didn't, I couldn't identify the coconut or the pineapple. Mm -hmm. Now that you say that, but I got that out of necessity. And then, like I said, the the, the strawberry milk that also tastes good with the mango mango jelly to me. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Very delicious. Oh yeah. But um, if, but knowing what I that kind of what I'm looking for, what's the next one I should try? Um, I, I I would want to say if you if you're feeling so tea right, okay. um, I, I'm a big fan of the peach oolong is another good one for me. Okay, it gives you it gives you that nice hearty oolong flavor. The peach is is right on my palate spectrum for for the sweetness level not being too high and okay. not being too low. You get a good there there there's a, a peach pulp. That uh, comes with that, so okay. you get those chunks. The of, real, real peach pulp. Okay, yeah, exactly. Okay. Wow. Um, okay. And if and if not peach, uh, you're too fancy of. Uh, is it? Are you a lychee or a lychee? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I've never really eat them. Really no. Eat them. Yeah, yeah, I've always known them as lychee. Yeah, I've, um, I've heard both. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, I know that uh, on the social medias there was a there was a, a huge debate about. Yeah. Um. Uh, but for me, it was always lychee. So the lychee black tea is also delicious. Uh, something to try. Uh, also comes with that that um you know that that pulp that kind of gives you those bits and pieces of the fruit yeah. and whatnot. Um, and is is super delicious. So if if you're feeling so fancy and and um and not too milky, those are probably way up on my list. Okay, I'm gonna um, come in there and try that that next time. Mm -hmm. uh, if you like something more milky, uh, like I said, the roasted uh, um, roasted chestnut is going to be chestnut. it's a new favorite wow uh, it goes well uh with the with in the almond slush or just the roasted milk tea itself okay. a roasted chestnut milk okay. tea. excuse me okay um and uh you know th there's just so many different ways you can do this beverage right and, yeah. and i you know actually the first time i had ever served a just completely unsweetened um no nothing no nonsense uh, black tea was just the other day uh, a gentleman came by he says how's your tea i said our tea is great and brewed fresh every day you know he says i don't want nothing in it and i said okay and i said you need to tell me before you walk away how much you like it you know, maybe he needed yeah, a dash yeah, of sweetener yeah, or something, yeah, you know, because yeah. it's, it's a hearty tea flavor. It's uh, it's dry. Yeah. It's really dry and kind of. Yeah. But if you like tea, oh, sure. you, you might like that. Yeah, yeah. Right. And this guy said this exactly hit the spot. It was it was this Saturday, uh, you know, this past yeah. Saturday, um, you know, when it was when it was real warm in the middle of the day, he says, I just need something cold, you know, and he had never seen a boba okay. tea before. Yeah. Right? But I, yeah. he knew he liked tea nice. and, and, and he loved that just fresh. Was that here in Valley Center? Right here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and in in of all our training that we did up in New York, um, of the two weeks that we've been able to operate almost here now, yeah, I haven't had uh, just a real plain tea guy, and this guy comes through and loves it just the way it is. He didn't have to have the bobas, yeah. he didn't have to have any of the sweeteners or yeah. flavors or fancy furl. He he liked the tea because the tea by itself is good stuff. Yeah. Well, it's, it, how many places can you just walk up and order a cold tea in the middle of the day besides Starbucks? But if you want it, I mean, in Valley Center, it doesn't exist. Yeah, yeah, you're right. This you're is right. it. Yeah. You you are the tea mm -hmm. guy mm -hmm. in Valley Center right now. Coffee is great. I, I like, you know, I have background in coffee. I still, yeah. you know, enjoy plenty yeah. of coffee, yeah. you know, uh, myself. But sometimes you, you you want something maybe a little more refreshing, yeah. right? A little brighter. Yeah. Um, not, not, not something that you have to doctor up too much to have a yeah. little kick. And, yeah. and maybe you, you, you didn't want all the coffee jitters, uh, you know, yeah. and so I think we fit right in to be able to provide yeah. that extra taste option for everyone around. Yeah, somebody just turned me on to mate. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, and yeah. I just no, no, not so. at all. Well, you know what I what, what I've seen of it. First of all, you need to have a special little jar, mm -hmm. and then you need to you need to nurse this thing wherever you, because everyone's carrying this little thing yeah. with a straw. Yeah, 
And I don't know what's going on there for, for what's really going on in there. Mm-hmm. And then all their teeth are covered in little brown bits. You know, like they're up in the gums, like little pieces of stuff. And mm-hmm. so they're talking to you with this questionable mouth, yeah. you know, full of brown bits. And it smells funny. Does it? Yeah. There's a taste. To, I mean, there's a yeah. smell to it. You know? I don't doubt it. Yeah. And then, uh, I don't know. It just And then he, oh, I said, well, is there any medicinal value? Mm-hmm. No. And I said, uh, he says, it's just the, the, the caffeine. He says, if you, if you are over coffee, he says, this right here is like rocket fuel compared to coffee. Interesting. So I don't, I don't need all that. I, I drink a couple cups in the morning and that's about it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, can I, we talked about your, well, I, wanna, I don't want to wrap this up. Uh, do you have anything else you want to talk about related to the menu? The, uh, st- like, do you sell any food there? No, you know, we... Any snacks? We, we were hopeful for that. Uh, the snacks are on their way. Uh, okay. That's something we had to um, get on a secondary order, so we'll be looking to get those in. Uh, they do a... Um, I'm not sure exactly what is available now, whether it's just the chocolate-covered bobas uh, okay. packaged up. Those are pretty delicious. Uh, there's also a... Um, uh, a kind of it comes out to be like a kettle corn, and it comes in a few different flavors, kind of popcorn. Okay, uh, so that's a nice little snack. Uh, uh, do you make them there, or is it? Gonna, oh they, no, this, this would be a prepackaged thing. Yeah, okay. and it's uh, I think they had a strawberry flavor, a boba flavor, um, and there might have been one other flavor that I don't recall. Um, but those uh, we're gonna look to have and available for everybody. Just a nice little snack to yeah. go with the, with the uh, with the tea treat. Um, the menu, like I said, the main categories, the, the punch, the milk tea, the slush is, 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 uh, the major part of it. The milk strike, uh, line is going to be made with lactate. So for those who may have right. the lactose intolerance yeah. problems, that might be an option for you that, that can, you know, you'd be able to handle. Um, and, uh, so that line as well has been super popular mm-hmm. just cause it, it mm-hmm. is, a, because it's a, a lactate milk, it gives you a much richer, uh, milk flavor yeah. there. And, um, and then it comes with the brown sugar bubbles uh okay which are, you know no. Wait, so what yeah they call them wow bubbles um and it's a it's a brown sugar uh bubble okay. and so it's a little bit sweeter than the usual honey bubbles okay um but the the wow uh drinks incorporate the wow bubbles and so you get that brown sugar flavor into the drinks it's you know maybe some milk some cocoa so let me understand these bubbles mm-hmm. are they they're not like boba they, they are exactly like boba. Okay. Instead of the last process going on to um, be uh, uh, prepared with a honey okay. um, uh, type uh, situation, the... I, the guess, I guess my question is this. Mm-hmm. Sorry to interrupt you, but my question is this. Mm-hmm. When I think of boba, I think of the little brown... Yes. Little, Tapioca little, pearls. Yes. Yes. And then I think of the jelly, mm-hmm. which I guess is like a, like a jello. Or some kind Central. of product, Central. and it's got little slivers. You mm-hmm. cut, it's cut up into little pieces, mm-hmm. so you get this kind of pile of little shards mm-hmm. of jelloish stuff, mm-hmm. and it's got the fruit or whatever is inside. Mm-hmm. Then you have the bubbles, mm-hmm. which now I understand are there's something they're filled. The the popping bubbles. They're popping bubbles. Mm-hmm. So there's like a little bubble yep. with stuff inside. There's a it's a there's a grape, a mango, and a coffee popping bubble. Okay. And yeah, it's got a little flavor, so it'll add a little extra kick. If if you know the the whole gummy bear atmosphere of a of a regular bubble yeah. is is outside of your taste spectrum, then this can give you a little extra boost of flavor or or what have you. The kids do love it. Uh, okay. The mango popping has been probably the most popular, um, but we have surprisingly even sold a lot of uh, the co- uh, the coffee popping to add a little bit coffee. of coffee. Yeah, even yeah, though tell we, me about that. What, what's happening there? So coffee is the only thing we couldn't have on our list. It was just logistically impossible to put an espresso machine is how the coffee um, go, is produced yeah. for the coffee drinks sure. with this brand. Unfortunately, an espresso machine just was not was not feasible inside of a truck. From dimensions or size or size, function? It's going to be all of the above. It's going to be the, the, the power draw it requires is, is great. It's like 40 um, amps, something like that? It's, it's, it's huge. I mean, we already have yeah. a huge generator, but this could have spilled yeah, okay. the limit. I see what you're yeah, doing. Yeah. And, and so the, um, the power draw, the water sourcing, because if you don't have enough water, say, for your coffee maker, then you burn out the boiler, you have issues with the espresso maker itself, right? So it needed constant water um, feed, it needed constant water dumping, 
And so to negotiate that and plumb that on a truck, all for an espresso machine that you'd use a very small amount of time just was not feasible. Yeah. And so the um, uh, only way we have any coffee on this truck, unfortunately, is just these coffee popping bubbles. Yeah. So we wish we could have had it on the menu for sure. I, I'm, I'm, like I said, a big coffee fan, and I know that the coffee drinks that Kung Fu Tea does uh, offer um, are delicious. Um, and they were some of my favorite when we were up in training. But just logistically impossible yeah. on a truck. I can see that. I can so. see that. So t- I've not had these bubbles. Mm-hmm. So the bubbles obviously are made and they survive being in the glass. What I know with boba, you have a wider diameter straw mm-hmm. that you can draw the boba through the straw. Mm-hmm. Is are these on par with that? Is that so? They pop in your mouth? Uh, no, they they're a teeny bit smaller uh, than the actual tapioca pearls, okay. right? Um, and they they they're just kind of like a maybe a gelatinous type um, uh, skin, essentially, okay. yeah. filled with a little bit of flavor in okay. each of them. So they, they, they give you that little pop of flavor, yeah. you know, once once they hit your mouth. Okay. Um, and and like I said, the grape, the mango, and the coffee is what those come in. Um, I had a customer order the coffee the other day, and I was like, you know, she put them in a Oreo slush, and I was like, whoa. That makes sense to me, it you know, good. chocolate you know? and cream yeah. and a little, a little kick coffee, coffee yeah. flavor in there, you know? Yeah. Um, I thought that was actually pretty yummy when I gave it a try myself. I want to um, try it now, but you know what? I want to go back to those brown sugar, that brown sugar ones mm-hmm. as well, right? Exactly. The bubbles, uh, like I said, we had to offer the two styles of the tapioca pearls. One is, uh, comes in a honey type solution. Okay. Um, and then the other one is cooked in brown sugar, uh, which gives it that, that, extra caramel yeah yeah. caramelization i love that and it 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 becomes the star of the drink by itself (sighs) you can add that to any drink you want but the milk strike series gives you that nice brown sugar glaze around the cup with the milkiness that brown sugar milk is where it's you know is is what yeah yeah, and, and a lot of people are really into that that was surprisingly really popular here in valley center where in the places that i might have trained in new york didn't seem to be pushing a lot of that stuff. And, yeah. and that was, like I said, a surprise. I love brown sugar. I could almost, there have been times when I'll be cooking with it. Yeah. I'll make some, you know, um, honey glazed chicken or something. Mm-hmm. And it has a mm-hmm. calls for brown sugar. Mm-hmm. And there's, you know, that big, there's just like a, a, a dried kind of rock mm-hmm. of brown sugar mm-hmm. in, in any bag you get. Yeah. It's just this clod that never gets broken down. Mm-hmm. I just usually pop it in my mouth because <laughs> I just, I, I love brown sugar. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. So I can only imagine what those must be like. Yeah, you know, it's it's uh, maybe a delicate sweetness, right? Caramelized, I think, is a oh, good man. good good word for yeah. it. You know, and 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 brown sugar milk, you kind of mm, that flavoring boy. together, right? Okay. It, I mean, it, it, it was a hit. The other really popular one that I didn't realize was going to be such a big deal, taro. Taro, no, taro, taro what? No, what? The taro flavored milk tea. We do okay. a taro milk uh, yeah. tea. That's uh, here you're saying in Valley Center? Yeah, we do that one. Okay. Um, it's a taro syrup that goes along with the um, uh, either black tea or green tea and and then the milk. I'm trying to imagine these flavors, by the way. Go ahead. So. Yeah, and it gets all shaken up and uh, all together, but that taro is, is so overwhelmingly popular in all of its forms, whether it's the taro milk tea, taro milk green tea, or the taro slush, all really popular. Um, like I said, in in, in the experiences of the past, I didn't make that too many times during training, but man, it, it was our very Hit. first day we realized that's, that's what Valley Center likes. Now, did they ask for that without you telling them or did they, did you tell them first about what it was? No, people they came, just said they yeah, they're bang, banging down the door. I think that might've been the very first drink I made on our very okay. first day of operation. And that was, I was like, Oh, okay. I can make that for you. you well, know? Look, I have a weird relationship with that because that's how they make poi. Right? Exactly. And exactly. poi, now my understanding is I had uh, Hawaiian friends. Mm-hmm. Taro root is like a potato or it's a root. It's a, it's a lagoon, a lagoon. No, no. It's a, it's a, like a potato. It's a root. In the family, a family, like a, like a yam, I believe. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. But the ones, the one I had mm-hmm. was, it was kind of um, flavorless. Correct. It wasn't like a, like a yam in the sense it's got that, mm-hmm. that potato slash something flavor, a mm-hmm. little sweetness to it. It was just kind of there. Yeah. And it was kind of the poi that I've had, mm-hmm. and maybe this is just poi. Mm-hmm. It was kind of gritty. Yeah. And it was kind of flavorless. Yeah, there's a texture to it for sure. And um, I think, you know, maybe I've had it with a little bit of salt, just kind of 
brightens that flavor up okay. a little bit for you okay. and, and gives you a different perspective yeah. on it as salt you know will do to yeah. the dishes yeah um but the uh the terror that we use is is more a sweeter flavor of it okay and cool and, and it, it 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 doesn't have that same gritty texture because it's a syrup that goes yeah. into the beverage sure but i mean it is you know I don't definitely know. taro though it's it's definitely taro, and when, the first time I had it, I I was like, man, this this is this is very very yummy. And, okay, and and it, I, I'm not sure what attracts everyone to it if they hadn't had it before. Yeah, but I think once you've had it before, you're like, oh yeah, okay. that's that's a good one. Well, I'm I'm trying it now, and I, and now I want to try it with uh, the 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 brown sugar bubbles. Mm, yeah, that's that, what that, sounds that, good to I me right that'll, now. Yeah, that'll that'll mix it up for sure. My other yeah. favorite that we're doing for the season um, is the the spirit spooky slush. Okay, uh, now now let me stop you there. I want you to remember this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a friend of mine from Riviera Supper Club, San Diego, mm-hmm. that you should go to too. Mm-hmm. This guy was recently tasked with making pumpkin spice chicken wings. Ooh, that sounds interesting. I don't know how interesting it is, but he made them. So you're saying this is basically your contribution to the Halloween season. Yep. Uh, Kung Fu Tea came out with this for the season, uh, launched the beginning of this month. Um, it is a green tea slush, which actually, okay. I, 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 green if, tea I'm not mis- if I'm not mistaken, I, I think this is the only green tea slush that is offered. So something um, like a Frankenstein kind of skin tone. Yeah. Well, what they did was they created a, um, a taro milk cap. So okay. now we got the green matcha slush. Okay. We're mixing in there a milk cap, which is like a, a uh, gives it maybe like a, a whipped marshmallow type texture okay. flavored now, with that wh- taro flavor. Okay. So now we got the green slush. We got the purple mixed in fluff and then a little bit of Oreos on top, you know, okay. and, and all that together. I mean, it actually goes together really really well okay. that the that that light sweetness from the taro um you know kind of uh, brighten up that nice hearty green tea slush um so, i want one of those too now I, well i i saw it i the first time i saw the menu launch i was like mm, i don't know and, and it, it's been a hit really? and and then the first time i tried it i was like oh that's why that's why okay. it, it was like this this thing is great and i'm gonna try it now yeah, that, that one's high up on the list for sure. We do have a bunch of people who like the green tea and Oreo combination, and, and that's what's in that beverage as well. Yeah. Um, but I do have a, a customer who's been coming to us very regularly for a matcha milk. Um, is going to be a, a matcha uh, versus our regular green tea. Uh, this is more a matcha green tea with milk. And um, he does that with the Oreo topping. And, and I've seen that before in my Starbucks life. Yeah. And, and I always thought it was weird then, but after trying it myself now that I've, you know, got my own shop, I want to make sure I know what these guys are drinking. And I tried it. I was like, man, that actually, the Oreo and the matcha green tea go really well together. Now I'm not, I've had very little experience with matcha. Mm -hmm. I follow a guy named by the name of uh, Dr. Andrew Weil. Mm -hmm. He was the co-creator of true food kitchen down San Diego. He's a health guy, Mm -hmm. health. He's a doctor. And he sold matcha powder. Mm-hmm. So I tried it. Uh, it wasn't, you know, it was fine. Mm-hmm. You know, it was a health food. So I was yeah. like, okay. Yeah. But you're seeing, and then I've seen pe- people lately buy matcha drinks. Mm-hmm. Like that's, they go to a place to buy matcha. So I don't, that's the only familiarity I have with it. Mm-hmm. You're saying there's, they, they had, oh, wait, wait, no, check that. They put matcha on desserts too, right? Yes, matcha is big, definitely big with uh, desserts. I know that Starbucks had a had a matcha uh, uh, frappuccino in the past. They they had that for a while. Does it, it have a flavor though? The, yeah, it's it's going to be a like a I would say a, a heartier green tea flavor because okay. green tea by itself is fairly delicate. Right. That's why you brew yeah. green tea at a lower temperature. Yeah. It's more shorter time. Tea. Yep. Shorter mm-hmm. times. Um, it's overall flavor is not as pungent as dark, not as maybe yeah. not as earthy. Yeah. Or smoky. Like a jasmine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so that, that green tea is, is, is so delicate. But if you really like green tea and you want a, a deeper green tea flavor, I think that's when matcha powders usually come into play. Okay. And that, that's what usually comprises most okay. matcha, in my experience, is, is going to be like a powder type matcha. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's ground up, you yeah. know, tea and, yeah. and, and flavorings to be of, of, of that you know, thicker green tea flavor. And, and so if, if you like green tea and it usually goes best with milk to kind of balance yeah. it back out, uh, that, that one has been pretty popular as well. You know what? I know Kung Fu tea doesn't like, they don't focus on health food. Mm-hmm. You know, there's some healthy aspects to it. Of course. But I've recently got into this thing called golden milk. What is that? It is, they, they make, put turmeric 
and they put uh, ginger powder mm-hmm. together, and then they put some sort of sweetener. As we're sitting here talking, because I mean, I, I don't look like I'm a big health food guy, mm-hmm. but I used to be very into big, a lot of health food, mm-hmm. but I love the flavor and what I think turmeric and ginger does for you. Mm-hmm. Turmeric, ginger, lemon, and usually black pepper. I, I do those, those little uh, uh, ginger shots That's at, exactly at, what they at do. Fruit, fruit places. Some of those places do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the jambas, and I know the nectar uh, yeah. juice. I'm, I always hit them for the ginger yeah. uh, shot. And exactly. I, not my favorite flavor, I'm not yeah. going to lie, but yeah. because they say it's it's got to be good for you, yeah. I, I'll, I'll catch it every now and then. And I was just sitting here thinking, as you're describing all these drinks, mm-hmm. Wouldn't it be awesome? Now, I don't know if you had any latitude or control, mm-hmm. but I was thinking, couldn't you put the ginger turmeric uh, and something like that into one of those drinks, maybe with the matcha? The, you know, I, I, I wish we had more flexibility yeah. with our offerings. I know okay. that I've had uh, one customer the other day was actually fairly disappointed that our milk options were not as vast as they might have hoped. Like they wanted some goat you know, or some... Yeah, some complete dairy alternative, right? Okay. And unfortunately, the drinks that we serve are drinks that are mandated by... Alligator? By, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, not yet. I mean, if we could find it, I'd use yeah, yeah. it if somebody really wanted it, but yeah. it wouldn't be my decision yeah, yeah, yeah. to make, you know? Yeah. Um, so, okay. that, you know, okay. that, that I is... I was just thinking, I was just thinking out loud. I, oh, I, but I wish, yeah. you know, and, yeah. but, but I know from actually when I was training in New York, uh, we met, uh, some of the product development team, um, as, uh, pistachio, uh, was being, um, tested, uh, sure. and then they were verifying, you know, the, the, that they can produce a specific quantity of it and, and quality of it and a repeatable, um, uh, beverage that, you know, they can disseminate across the nation. Uh, we were there going to see them kind of go through their work. And so they do run through a lot of legwork to make sure that the product is, is going to please the palates yeah. of people yeah. and, and that it can be made consistently across, you know, all their franchises. Um, but they come up with cool stuff all the time. Sure. I mean, like I said, this, this, this spooky slush, yeah. uh, that pistachio one and the roasted are probably the most recent ones. And, and I know why they launched them because they're delicious. They, they actually are, are really good stuff. Well, look, next time you're thinking of something, you want to tap into your, your, uh, Hawaiian roots. Mm-hmm. I have two suggestions. Mm-hmm. One, facetiously, mm-hmm. if I can say that correctly, facetiously, mm-hmm. uh, Spam Musubi, mm-hmm. blended drink. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I don't know. I'm just thinking, thinking out loud. The, but the real one that I want to mention is I would love to get something with uh, sweet beans. You know, the beans couldn't make it on our menu. The okay. Zuki beans, the red beans. Yeah. Yeah, they uh, um, managed to, I mean, uh, uh, of the great greater offerings that Kung Fu Tea has, we hit almost all of them. We were capable okay. of producing almost all the beverages. I, I, I think they're in the nature of a hundred or so different offerings and we can make 80 of them or it's, it's something yeah. along okay. those lines. We, we accommodate almost everything. Red Bean didn't make the list. But they do have one at Kung Fu? Uh, yes, other other stores okay. will have that. Okay. Yes, okay. Uh, okay. other Kung Fu Tea locations will have that. So if, if that's your fancy, then that's what you have I, to go It just for came it. to my mind as you mm-hmm. were talking about Shave Ice. It's very popular. We're talking about Hawaii. Mm-hmm. We're talking about, you know, things like that. All yeah. this kind of yeah. blended drink and so forth. Yeah. Uh, I had, I, had at, I think at that spot, what would you call it again? In The Matsumoto Shave Ice? Yes. Yeah. That is where I had mm-hmm. Shaved Ice. With all, like a, I don't remember what they called the it. Ice cream. You had the ice cream and the red beans. Uh, they put the, if I'm not, yeah. And ahead. the mochi balls. You gotta, nah, gotta have mochi the mochi balls. Oh man, they do the mochi mo- balls. Oh, they're, I mean, they're like a mo- mochi. Oh. You know what mochi is? Yeah. Yeah, with the, um, the uh, little rice exactly. cover. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you maybe wrap, uh, it's, it's, it ends up being like a gummy bear, right? I think and I had these. Ra- and you wrap ice yeah. cream with it. Yeah. yeah the, the, oh man, those mochi. I balls. think I had those recently at, uh, what is it called? The ice cream spot, Menchie's. Ooh, yeah. Yes, exactly. I think I had them there. That is where I go get my mochi. Fix. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, that's where I had the mochi ball. Mm-hmm. But when I had the, I don't know, they call it rainbow. But it was the rainbow shave ice with all the different like they they go sick by the way. They're very generous yeah. with the syrup. Yeah. And then they had a scoop of vanilla mm-hmm. underneath. Got to do the ice cream for sure. And then they did the Azuki they did the beans. sweet beans underneath that or the beans on top. Mm-hmm. It was, I could say, one of the times in my life where I was concerned 
and surprised. Yeah. Because I never ever in my life said beans and ice cream and yeah. s- shave ice. It, that 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 has Japanese roots. Yeah. Um, and uh, I mean, an absolute delicacy, right? It was delicious, but but I was definitely like, uh, do I like? Uh, yeah. Oh, do I yeah. like this? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. It takes it, the second bite to realize. I had, maybe the third for me. <laughs> it was it was it took a minute to go. Wow. Yeah. Bean texture, sweet beans on top of that. Yeah. Weird, but yeah. I loved it. Uh, are you going to be able to do anything? That, are you going to have any control? To have some nods to Hawaii in there? You know, I think um, uh, with the way the brand works, I mean, they have their their image that they're looking to portray and things yeah. like that. Um, but I mean, you, you talk to me, and and you know, the other, like I said, the the hidden hidden, I guess, uh, experience that I, I I wasn't sure of having and and didn't really think much about was the real connection that we would be able to make with the community. Okay. You know, ha- having a regular customer, right? Somebody who comes to yeah. see me because they want their yeah. boba and, 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 and with, with a growing population of, of those regulars here, um, you know what I mean? It, it, it's, it's a matter of, I think the relationship that, uh, I was able to gather, you know, in, in prior work experiences, um, you know, with my customer, um, and, and so being able to spread that and, and kind of expand that greater is, has been such a, 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 a pleasant surprise, you know, that, that I didn't see coming. Um, so being able to, you know, push forward and, and, and really get whatever the customer wants. If, if I do hear everybody wants all the red yeah. bean, I'll, I'll push for that. No, well, I mean, I'm just saying, yeah, I'm just saying, yeah, it's just no, but, a, a but fond this, memory. Yeah, no. And yeah. I mean, but that's, that's, you know, like I said, what we're here for is, yeah. is really being able to serve the community. Um, you know, something that they don't have to go all the way out of town for, for sure. Dude, I'm so gobsmacked. I'm mm-hmm. so happy, mm-hmm. especially because it's Kung Fu tea. Yeah. Not because it was any of the other, I won't say competitors. I'm glad you had a prior experience with Kung Fu tea. Uh, and, and, and if, you know, it made you flip, flip the car around real quick too, right when you saw us. I I, mean, well, I, I think, did. Yeah. I, I mean, I turned around and went over there yeah. because I saw this, oh, I just saw the sign and I was like, oh, they're probably in Valley Center. And I was like, no, they, what are they in Valley mm-hmm. Center for? I said, they're making a delivery? No. Uh, and I just, so I, I said, I have to go investigate. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we, we were out in my, I just got my car back out of the shop and we drove over there and I was like, I thought I was dreaming. Yeah. I thought I was, <laughs> I yeah. called my son. Yeah. You better get down here right now. If you see a kid named Damien, Damien. tall, dark. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He comes over. He'll be over there a lot. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, are you, so let's talk about some hours. Mm-hmm. What's your availability once everything gets back into action? Yeah. How many days, I mean, what days a week, hours, availability, what like that? So we've been really good about posting um, our uh, hours of operation up on the social medias. Um, you know, I think we have one of the larger followings on social media of, amongst the other Kung Fu Tees around. And so we've really utilized that as a strong tool to be able to communicate what's going on. Uh, you know, even just the couple days down we took uh, initially after the first week of operation, we were operated a Wednesday through Sunday. Um, Sunday, we ended up having to take an early day off because we had the initial generator issues. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, we came back strong with the temporary solution coming that Wednesday through Saturday again the following week. Um, you know, from what we can tell, the, the middle of the week, we want to be there for the high school kids and, 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 and you know, the after school practices and things like that, you know, were, were peak hours for us. Um, and so, uh, you know, working the 11 through about 7 made a lot of sense in through this summer. Um, you know, we, the truck is capable of production through those hours, you know, fresh product and, and having all of the necessities we need to be able to produce that consistent fresh product all day long um, is, is there for that amount of hours through the week. Um, Saturday was uh, definitely a nice busy day for us these last couple weeks. Um, it, the, the peaks fluctuate a little bit differently, but we want to be here as much as possible for sure. Um, and I, I think the other thing to gauge now is, is I mean, we in the beginning of this, uh, we were hoping at our most um, hopeful was a 4th of July grand opening is what we had envisioned as this project had started up. To finally the, the past for the July. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, okay. that that was what we had hoped, uh, and then you know one one thing led to another, and and um, you know different conversations were being had to uh, make everything kind of happen for that, and and we hit a few hiccups that we couldn't avert, and then we wanted to make sure, obviously, that we were capable of it. So we, even after receiving the truck, we took the time to outfit it accordingly, uh, make sure that we were, you know, well within all regulations, and making sure that, uh, you know, the, w- what was the actual capacity? Like I said, this hadn't been done before. And so we, we had to run many tests and, and, and functionality uh, workings of the truck to be able to do all this. 
Um, and, and now as we get to this part of the year where we're going to lose the daylight, you know, coming that, to the winter, right? Yeah, exactly. And so we're talking about even just the next couple of weeks, we're going to be setting back the clocks in an hour, you know? And so if we're dark by I five, I hate that, man. Yeah. I wish it, when are they going to stop doing that? I thought they were going to get rid of it. I thought it was a thing. Wasn't that voted on? I, I thought I th- so too. I think next I heard year something is, about that. Yeah. I think next year or something, they're supposed to stop doing it, but however it works, I mean, we're still going to be affected by the sunlight because we're, we're a mobile yeah. operation. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, you know, also want to be concerned with um, our employee safety sure. um, and, and things of that nature. Uh, if it's dark by five, do we stay open till seven? Uh, does they, I, I, I mean, if you guys are showing up, I'll, I'll stay sure. later. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm not going to ditch you out as, as soon as as soon as um, the clock hits. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. because like I said, that 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 was the part about it that we didn't see coming was the serving the community part. Even just you know not being there, I know that we're bumming people out. Um, you know, on a daily right now. So it, yeah, it, how so? I mean, how do you mean? It will, by not being there? By not being there. Yeah. For these last yeah. couple of days, you know, I think that's something as a, as a part of a small growing business, we want to be consistent for our customers as I, much as possible. I mean, can I just be honest with you? I mean, I'm a little crestfallen myself. Yeah. Because we can't go over there and have one right now. Bummer. I know. So, so next week, though, I'm plan- next week, I'm going to be there a couple of times. That's that's the goal right now is is we're looking to be there um, coming back this weekend. I uh, want to make sure the, trunk is fun- the truck is functional um, because we, 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 we don't want to run to another point where we're just wasting product that we yeah. started the day with. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, and and like I said, the, the engineers and the guys who are working on the truck right now to just kind of direct some airflow better, um, I, I know that they're capable of, of the task, and so I expect no issues and, and uh, by the end of the week, you know, being up and running. So uh, the other thing to consider with our hours of operation is, uh, you know, it is a mobile truck. It requires maintenance. And so, you know, taking a Monday off is we, what we decided was a necessity because, uh, you know, oil changes and things sure. of that nature that we got to do is difficult to do on a Sunday. Yeah. The rest of Valley Center seems to be okay with being shut down on a Sunday. Is that because it's not busy enough? Would I be plenty busy because I'm the only thing open in town? Um, or is it also not worth the time, uh, you know, for, you know, is, is anyone going to miss us on a Sunday, Sure. which we have not had the opportunity to work through. Cause that was when we had the generator issue, uh, last week. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, so we're, we're working through those logistics at this very moment. We were, we were looking at a Tuesday through Sunday. Um, but, but, um, working a Tuesday through Saturday might end up being the goal, um, and shortening those hours just a hair because of the sunlight that we're lacking coming into the winter months. So yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. So I think, I think we're kind of projecting an 11 to six, um, kind of deal. Um, and, and maybe a shorter schedule on Sundays or maybe no Sundays at all. Sure. And um, you'll find that out as, as time goes on. Oh, exactly. Know. Yeah. We, we, we wanted, you know, the, that's the other thing is all the extra time that this project has taken is, is like I said, been a blessing in disguise because we, we've learned so much more to be able to make better decisions with, with how the business started up, you sure. know, with, with how we operate through the day. Um, you know, uh, working with uh, multiple bid- builders gave us uh, different ideas back and forth. And, and the builder we ended up working with, um, you know, had, had a ton of experience in the brand. So he set us up for success to be able to pull this off, you know, with, with, a, with a massive ice chest, uh, custom ice chest, you know, uh, that way we can always have everything we need in that respect. You mean like an actual ice chest? Yeah, it's 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 massive. It's like I mean it it, it it's, okay. it's it's you know f- probably about five feet wide, but it's it's tall enough that I'm I'm probably holding somewhere in the nature of seven to nine hundred pounds of ice almost. Wow. Uh, just and, and that's what we need to operate through the day comfortably. Yeah, for sure. Right. Yeah. Um, a lot of the teas are cooled um, with ice, not watered down with ice, but cooled. Um, and that's how we get that consistent, good flavored tea inside of our drink. Okay. Um, and so, uh, being able to do this all, you know, uh, and everything we learned along the way to get here, it, it, I'm glad it took this much time. Like you said, yeah. everything happens for a reason. Yeah. And, and I, I think we got us to the point now, um, that, that this is happening this way for a reason too, you know, look, I'm the last one to, uh, ever say that really, cause I'm so impatient as a mm-hmm. person. Exactly. I, I'm, you know, you want everything to happen yesterday yep. and you want it to have it early and often yeah. and there you want it to work out immediate gratification. It's just the it's way it goes. It's what we're all used to these days. I, you know, you're probably right because yeah. you know, I, I go through some of the Instagram pages and I just go, I can find myself just flipping, 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 oh, flipping, cool. flipping. And it's just, that's the nature of, the internet. It's the nature of the world right now. We want, we expect immediate results because of the internet. Mm-hmm. So I get it. I get it. But 
I get you need to be down for maintenance. I know that you have to be down for uh, to take a rest mm-hmm. because you know going, going, going. I've been going, going, going. Yeah. Uh, for the last six, seven weeks now, I was I burned myself out. I burned myself to the ground. Mm-hmm. I scorched earth over the last six weeks, and uh, this last weekend I took a weekend off. I, I took a weekend off of just not thinking about it. You're allowed. It, it, you You're know, allowed. I didn't think I was up until because I, I had. Mm-hmm. You should understand. I got my car back last Thursday, and I got to take it out on the road. It's convertible, mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. top thing. Mm-hmm. I just went out. I left in the morning at about seven o'clock in the morning, mm-hmm. and I head out to the coast. And I didn't come back until three. Mm-hmm. And it was just me listening to music in the car, yeah. just driving around. I it, but I didn't have to think about anything. Yeah. I didn't think about you know go to the site and upload this and you know got to t- mix three of those and and you got to have that schedule this thing for next Tuesday and mm-hmm. you've ordered this and. None of that. D- disconnecting from work is something that is a challenge for almost everybody. Right? It was because like, be, be, we are so tethered now. You know, yeah. in in my last yeah. uh, last role, um, you know, I I felt like I was literally working all the time. Besides the long days that I was working, yeah. I, I mean, you know, at I'd home. be yeah, I, I, well, at home I'd still get calls from customers and things Man. like that, and then it was immediate gratification was so necessary to yeah. make sure that they were not yeah. flying off. Right. And, and, and we were being getting, they were getting the level of service that they expected. Right. And it's good for business, but your brain, I don't know about your brain, but my, my weak little pebble, my brain, oh, yeah. I was waking up at three o'clock in the morning mm-hmm. and I'd be, I'd go, go back to sleep, go, I, you go to the restroom, come back late in the bed. And I'd just be grinding away yeah. on some random fact yeah. or thing that needed to get yeah. done. Yeah. And I just be going, okay, well, I'm going to you know, do that. You know, wait, you know, yeah. Make the call, call that guy. Yeah. No, yeah. it shouldn't be that way. Yeah. It shouldn't be, you should be able to go and just shut yeah. it down. Yeah, no, it's good for you. It's good for you. And I think this, this, I mean, that's been a nice little thing, even though we've not been able to be out there for, you know, Valley Center and have the truck around, like we're getting a little reset right now that I think is healthy for everybody. Okay. She's getting to play with her horses. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm a big uh, billiards fan, so I play a lot of billiards. Uh, yep. Uh oh. I'm a pool player. Where do you play? I, I play um, mostly in North County. I play in the APA leagues. I'm actually okay. on the board of governors there with them, a captain okay. of a team, and on yeah. uh, three different teams myself. No way. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I, I, I love to play pool. I've been uh, with the league for about ten or eleven years now, actually, almost since as long as I've been here. Okay. Um, and uh, and so I've gotten to play more pool than I have in the last couple weeks. That I've been very thankful for. That I didn't forget anything. Yeah. You know, I didn't yeah, didn't yeah. lose all yeah, the yeah. All, all the, the shots. Touch. Mm-hmm. Yep. No, that that was still pretty good. Yeah. A couple undefeated sessions going on right now so far. So yeah. if I can keep pushing on that, I'll be stoked. Um, but I know that the the business is going to be taking the time from a lot of that. So I'm trying to keep it around as much as possible okay. because that's my release. You know, I'm a, I'm a competitive person. Played competitive uh, tennis in, or, or competition tennis in in uh, school. Did you really? Uh, yeah, I actually had HPU. I was on the it's their Division two tennis team. I played on the tennis team there. Okay. Started in high school. Do you play now at all though? I play at, uh, since the business has started. Sure. I've you had no there. time. I was once a week, and there's a group of guys. We play on Saturday mornings out in Oceanside. Okay. And uh, that was, you know, we we eight of us show up. We pair up with some guy, yeah. and we play with them as a partner through the yeah. day, playing the other teams out. Yeah. We'll get, to, man, I remember when we first started that group, we were playing, we were on the court till 10, 11, 12 o'clock from 7 a.m. Yeah. I was like, who wants to play tennis at 7 a.m., you know, on a, on a yeah. beautiful, you know, yeah. Saturday morning? Yeah. Um, but it, it became so worth it for me because it still allowed me that outlet of physical, you know, yeah. exertion. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I mean, I, I, I can still play the game at a, at a decent level, you know, yeah. that, that makes well, it a young fun. guy, dude. Come on. We talk about still uh, getting, getting into my forties, you know, realizing I just realized, uh, this year is, has marked my 20th year with a, with a tennis life. Um, started in, like I said, in high school, played in college. I taught some tennis, um, in through my college years. Uh, I was at one point teaching tennis at uh, Punahou is a, big private school out in Hawaii. I taught there for Punahou. Punahou. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're the buff and blue out there. Um, made major private school. They're one of the, actually the oldest private schools in the nation. Um, and, uh, you know, I think Obama went there and a bunch of major athletes, Michelle, Wee went there, Okay. a bunch of football players went yeah. there. And so it, it's big name school. I was thankful to get into the, um, Academy and tennis uh, program that they had there. I, I mean, I was on the court sometimes 30 plus 40 hours a week almost. Um, was, and it was, it was eye opening. It was, it was enlightening. I worked every age from 
from kindergarten through senior citizen, um, okay. and, 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 and really got into, um, you know, advanced level of teaching and nice. instruction coaching nice. there. Um, and so now I get to play, uh, you know, the once a week there, but pool is given me that other way for me to exert my competitive nature okay. and, 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 and compete, yeah. you know, okay. and, and try to get better at something and, and improve. Right. So, well, I'm, I'm a big billiards guy. Is that right? I don't hit the ball as much as I used to. Mm-hmm. I never was a scratch player. I was, I, I was never no Gil Reyes. Mm-hmm. Um, but I love to play. Yeah. Uh, have my own stick. Mm-hmm. We used to go, used to go to pool halls and, you know, take some money off some people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes now, I'm never any, you know, great players or like that. Um, but I love to play. Yeah. Uh, been a lifelong tennis player is that right? since I was 20. Oh, wow. And my son is, he plays for the Valley Center High. Oh, he does. Yeah, he's uh, he's their number one. He's their, wow, yeah. wonderful. And he's got a seven eight UTR. Is that right? Yeah, and uh, he's a very competitive player. So if you're looking to play and you want someone with a game, yeah, my son he he plays daily at Adams right here. Okay, yeah. man, they that is good to know. Four courts. Yeah, no, they have. Six courts. Yeah. 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 I think I, I, I was wondering if I could squeeze it in. I saw somebody, you know, asking in the community about, um, oh, you know, I need a, I need a ball machine for my kid. And I was like, you know, uh, I don't have a ball machine to give, but I was actually interested in offering my time just yeah. to get out there another yeah. day that I can get out and hit yeah. a few balls. Cause I can make tennis fun at any level. I mean, yeah. you know, with, with, with a beginner or with a more advanced player, yeah. I'll hold my own and be able to make it fun for everybody. Yeah. And, and that's thankful to the, um, the, the, the customer tennis that I learned as, as you know, in my teaching yeah. years, yeah. um, to, to still just be able to have fun getting the ball back to where it needs to be. And, 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 and even if you're not, capable of getting it where it needs to yeah, be yeah. you know we could still have a really good time um do you have a number one stroke do you have a do you have a i i, I i'm definitely a serving volleyer i grew up in that okay. generation my okay. first high school so you come into the, coming to the net yeah well I, I was always a doubles guy okay I, w- I was not always big enough for for the singles court sure. to be able to okay. cover as well yeah. and things of that nature um but i i was always a doubles player i was kind of born and bred and went to you know many state championship uh competed in state championships okay. um in the doubles category and uh, so serving and volleying is it. So that means I got a decent serve. I got a decent volley. Um, and, and, and the forehand is what everybody has. Right. But, um, yeah, being my short game is probably where it's at. And, okay. and, and, and my doubles uh, mentality, I think is, it would be my strengths on the court. Do you have a, uh, do you have a, a two handed backhand or a single backhand? Uh, time and a place. I think, uh, okay. uh, any coach will tell you pick one, but I think, I think you sometimes can, whatever yeah. you need. Yeah, exactly. I think. Would, so are you a, are you a, are you a stroke guy or are you a win guy? And they're different for me mm-hmm. because some people are very interested in looking good on the court mm-hmm. and they love to, you know, get the, the, mm-hmm. the backhand, get it in. Mm-hmm. You know, they want to look good doing it. Mm-hmm. And some people just are down and dirty, want to win. You know, I, th- I think that, um, I, if you watch me play, um, I think you'll, you, you might say I have a decent enough stroke. Like it looks good. You know, the, I think w- if you were to look, you know, when you look at a word that's misspelled yeah, and you just know, you, you don't, you might not even know how to spell yeah. it, but looking at it, you know, it's misspelled. Yeah. I think the same goes for any stroke or, or, okay. or, or follow through throwing okay. a, throwing a ball, right? Yeah. There's something about it that looks wrong. Yeah. I would say my, my, my strokes look proficient, Good. um, okay. on, on any level. Okay. Um, it's funny cause I did actually just take a golf lesson not long ago. Okay. Uh, and, and, uh, you know, there's video, um, of my strokes from behind and then from, uh, you know, facing towards me sure. and, and not knowing a whole bunch about golf in high school, it was actually golf or tennis. I yeah. was playing golf with yeah. some family. Yeah. Um, but there was a girl that was on the high school tennis team and I decided tennis was the way to sure. go. It was a better way to go. Yeah. <laughs> but so that's when, that's, that's when golf, you know, left my life a little bit, but I was playing a bunch then. And, and then not till this golf lesson really recently where I, you know, I was watching myself take a stroke and I was like, that's not the way it's supposed to look like, yeah, yeah. you know, that's yeah. spelled wrong for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, but if you watch me play tennis, I, I, I think I have a proficient stroke and that was from all the years of having to teach it. Right. Yeah. You, you yeah. can't, yeah. You, I, if I looked that goofy, you think somebody want to take a lesson from sure. me, you know? So, um, you know, having to teach the right thing and, and, and the, the, like I said, the Academy that I worked for, uh, there was, was next level. Like they were, you know, back when I was there, these were the first, um, 
uh, team sport activities that I'd ever seen utilizing video um, as a means for okay. helping a, a coach yeah. a player because y- you feel like you're doing it right and th- do you look like you're doing it right, right. you know and things like that was was kind of cutting edge and, and they use a lot of technology um, in that respect and so I, I got to groom myself as a young coach um, you know to be able to actually yeah. be proficient enough to tell somebody you know hey, this is how you do it well, look, if you're looking for a game, I am now. My son, uh, he'll give you a game. Yeah. And uh, I like to, I mean, I, I still, look, I actually stopped playing tennis mm-hmm. completely recently uh, because I've been busy with this thing and I've put on weight and I don't move very well right now. But, uh, well, let's fill up a four and that way we both don't have to move too much. Uh, you know what? My, um, <laughs> Some yeah, doubles, we, you know, yeah, if, we if can he's ever a, uh, sure. got a space on the court and he can't fill a fourth and, and needs that one, I, you know, can make myself available. Well, if you're available, we should just book it because, uh, they're oh, the courts are kind of always available. Is it really? Oh yeah. But yeah. are they, are they ever that busy over at Adams? Rarely. Okay. Rarely. Gotcha. Uh, the, the high school team plays there. Mm-hmm. They have uh, certain parts of the, of the week that they are already pre-scheduled. Mm-hmm. There, I know there's some, there's an older crowd that, that still plays there quite a bit. Mm-hmm. But you know what? I think, again, this is, okay, well, let me ask you this question. This will this answer a lot. What's your position on pickleball? <laughs> okay, well, you know, maybe, maybe we shouldn't do that. No, no, that. no, you're allowed. No, no, no. No, you're allowed. You're uh, well, allowed. you're allowed. You, you no, know, the problem is there's a big pickleball yeah. movement here. Yeah. And I am a tennis guy mm-hmm. who looks upon pickleball in a not so great way. I understand. But I, I did play paddle tennis. Oh, yeah. That looks fun. From Venice, I California. I really want to try that. That With the I, walls and you can run outside. No, I know. I haven't gotten there. Okay. This is the game that was invented uh, sometime about in 75 is in Venice soft, Beach. Soft tennis, I think they it's, call that now? This one here is just a, a wooden paddle. Yeah. And it's a deflated tennis ball. Okay. You poke a hole in it. Uh-huh. And it's a, it's a brand new tennis ball with a hole in it. Huh. This game is, to me... Almost like tennis. It's a smaller court, mm-hmm. but you can still feel the tennis. I've seen that court before. Yeah, I've, yeah, I, I've seen yeah. that court before. Pickleball to me is like hitting, it's like taking a plastic bat mm-hmm. to a wiffle ball. Mm-hmm. It's not baseball. So a bunch of guys uh, that I know from out here, we played tennis. You know, we 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 did some pickup games in Oceanside area Tuesday Thursdays. Yeah. You know, we'd get together, and then some of us would play on Saturdays. And uh, one of the guys managed to uh, lay a small concrete pad on his property, and he threw a barbecue. And he on the concrete pad, he built a little pickleball court. Never heard nothing. It barely had. This is early pickleball movement, right? Like when it just yeah. started coming up yeah. many years ago, and it was becoming. You know, growing, growing in, in its popularity. And with a bunch of us tennis guys, there was probably, you know, a couple dozen of us there. And then so we strung together some teams and we threw a little tournament together and a whole bunch of dummies, you know, that that were all proficient tennis players and, and hand eye coordination yeah. And, and, yeah. and whatnot. Just learning the game of pickleball there made it fun for all of us because we, you know, the, the, coordination was there you you, you got to learn the rules yeah where to stand how the the contact is different it messed up my tennis game for a couple of days because the sweet spot is in a way different place right um and but i don't imagine you're able to put any top spin or any side spin and or, you know some of those 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 big boy rackets out there now though they got a little bit more grit to them and, okay. and whatnot so okay. it's, it's a different game uh even just in these last few years uh because of the technology okay, okay. i mean i've been it's here's great. the thing yeah I, Getting older. Yeah. Okay. So here's the thing. I played tennis for a long, long time, Mm -hmm. like often. Mm -hmm. And then my kids were born and then everything just changed. Mm -hmm. We moved to Valley Center and I would drag them to the courts. I would, they'd be there little running around, you know, skateboarding, whatever they're doing. Mm -hmm. And my wife and I would play. Mm -hmm. Then my wife got her work, her work changed. Mm -hmm. And so then I'd be taking the boys over there to hit the ball. One of them took to it. Damien is a, he's the star tennis player at Valley Center High. The other one was like, eh, whatever. He's still, he's still very athletic, still very good. Doesn't have a big serve. He, he says it hurts his shoulder, which it can. Mm-hmm. Uh, how are we doing on time? No, I, I, we're okay. doing great. We're so, doing yeah, great. I, have, I have to wrap it myself. Mm-hmm. So uh, anyways, the tennis game, my tennis game slid because I couldn't find somebody who was as, as good as I was. Mm-hmm. And could be available that often. There are players that are far better than me in Valley Center. But 
I couldn't find somebody about my level that cared to play as often as we as I, I wanted to, because mm-hmm. I would have played four times a week. Right, right. But it's hard to schedule with, with people. They have work and this and that, kids and responsibilities. So my game sl- steadily between my weight getting heavier mm-hmm. and and my and just not playing enough mm-hmm. because playing at maybe your level, playing at my son's level, the serve is not. A bullet. It's not super powerful, mm-hmm. but what he can do with it. Yes. Dropping it, making it rain out there. Mm-hmm. Plus, the top spin is such that the ball can can bounce above your head. Yeah. And if he hits it just right, yeah. and you're out of position, maybe you're a foot over to the left or the foot over to the right, he mm-hmm. can get jammed. Yeah. Yeah. But the way the ball's coming, I had to I had to realign my whole brain mm-hmm. because when his game went up, yeah, he went right past me. Mm-hmm. And I was still trying to keep up with him. I was just trying to shag some balls every now and again. We take, we have a ball machine. We take the ball machine out there, and I would stand on the other side of the court, trying to make a return because I, I was a big fan of Agassi, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and he has a great return of service. Mm-hmm. And I, di- I didn't like Sampras, so uh, Sampras was the enemy. Mm-hmm. Agassi was my guy. The server and the returner, right? I loved, so I, I adopted more of a, re- a good return. Mm-hmm. So when he passed me, I was holding on for a while, trying to. You know, son, come back. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm not done with you, son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and but he's so far advanced now yeah. that when I do even go out in the court just to try and, you know, give run through a drill mm-hmm. or uh, just, you know, shag the ball or just he'll, you know, play out some points and I'll just try and give a return. The, he hits the ball so hard that I have to take my game, which has gone down from where it was when I was 20. Mm-hmm. To try and ramp it up to somewhere between where I am and where he is. And it's so, but then I play my wife mm-hmm. who doesn't play yeah. that much. So I have to go way down for her. Mm-hmm. So it was, I, if I was playing somebody at my level all the time and I could stay in shape, mm-hmm. then I would have somewhat of a game. But since I don't play that often yeah. and I stay away for weeks at a time, mm-hmm. when I come back, the timing's off. And, and, it, and it hurts to play, right? It's, 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 it's tough the next day just because, you, you know, those muscles aren't worked all the time. So you really feel it. It takes you out for a little bit of time. Do you know what I was doing for years? Mm-hmm. We're buying a new racket for every birthday or Christmas. I'd, somebody, I'd say, I need a new racket. My racket's not working for me. Mm-hmm. And then I bought him a ball, uh, stringing machine. So mm-hmm. he can string his own rackets. And I was going, my, these strings are not right. These strings, it doesn't, if when I bought a certain racket, it felt like a piece of my arm mm-hmm. after a little while because I was the muscles gone, yeah. uh, the timing's gone. It felt like I was hitting up with a piece of two by four. Yeah, that's what yeah. it, it was like. It was so much reverberation. You hit the ball off the frame, or you hit it too close to the outside of the frame, and you get it just jars you. Yeah, and I was like, I didn't have any more feel mm-hmm. that that lovely feel where you make that you know off the mm-hmm. hits the hits the it's sweet that, spot. Yeah, that pop. And it just makes the pop and you, you feel like, okay, I hit a good strike. I can come in to the net off of that, that nice shot and you're, you can be aggressive. I just stand at the baseline like a schlump yeah. and just go back and forth across the baseline. It's that game is way game. harder for me. I, like I said, I'm a serving volley, right? The, the baseline, I, it's, it was never really my thing. I don't dig it. A, a smaller stature a I love fellow to move. like myself. I love to move. I didn't like the ball getting out of my sweet spot. Yeah. So anything yeah. that was too high was yeah. was tough. That's why I always moving forward yeah. it was easier. Catch ball's, you on the rise. Yeah, the ball's gonna you know, hit me yeah. over here. And you know, with a serve, you know, being not that big of a dude, right? There's a drastic disadvantage in a yeah. serve, right? Because yeah. the eight, point A to B is a little bit longer from down here than on it the, is if you're if on you're, the ad court. Uh, well, if you're if you're a taller guy, yeah. I believe the math that I've I've heard on this is if you're you got to be seven foot nine to be able to reach up. And be able to hit a straight line on your serve for standing at the baseline into the service court, yeah, right? Yeah. And so if you're reaching up that high, I mean, I, I'm never getting up there. So my my serve is then has to arc, right? It has to go up and then down. On the serve? The, exactly. Yeah. And so, you know, being able to hit that 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 decent serve that can maybe pull somebody out of position. It's not the big bomber, yeah, right? Yeah. But a, something you place and, and, and create space on the court, you know, that, that was something I had to learn. So I've always had a decent enough kick serve, you know, that way on the ad court, I can get you out that direction and then a slice serve to get you out the other direction. And so that, that was always part of my game on some level, you know, I, I definitely wouldn't have been a Sampras yeah. level server or, or who's the guy who's slamming the serve right now. That that's right like, now. Oh, Yoko, oh, ben, ben, ben Shelton. Do you see him? No. With the or 50 mile an hour at the U.S. Open no. uh, last. No. Yeah. So he was blown it away. He played in the final against Djokovic. Okay. Uh, so he's a big baller hitting the huge serve. 
Um, but you know, I, I never had such, such a, such a beast of, of a weapon like that. The leverage. Before. How do you have the leverage? I mean, I, he's going way up there yeah. to get it and he's coming yeah. straight down. On he's me, crushing you know? it. Oh, it's some, something amazing yeah. really. Um, and I mean, what few people have ever been able to pop the ball that fast, you know? Mm, okay. I'm going to say, uh, Philip uh, He was, would have been up there. Uh, let's see who else. Roddick, Lendl. Roddick would have been up there as well. Uh, uh, I don't Roddick? know if anyone was serving that big back in Lendl's age though. I mean, 150. Sampras was it's, Sampras that's new thing. technology stuff, yeah. you know? Yeah. I mean, I well, and then Sampras played with that, the pro staff, the original pro staff. Yeah. I played with the version of that too. Yeah, I did too. Real heavy. Yeah. 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 Um, but that new pro staff's pretty good. I'm playing right now a, what is it? Uh, what am I playing? I was playing the uh, Babalot, mm -hmm. the Arrow. Yeah. The Nadal series. It's white and orange. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then I was then I'm playing oh I'm playing the orange one it's the head racket it's uh, the radical no no this is bright orange like uh, right. iridescent orange mm. it I can't think of what it is I got it for Christmas yeah I got the speed I got my head tennis racket guy right now played with the Babylons played with the Wilson yeah but the head uh, speed that Djokovic actually plays with I play with a version of that okay the white and the black one okay um, and that's been the new stick setup that I got because it's, it's didn't kill my arm when I first tried it I can kind of do all the same things that I used yeah. to be able a little to slice do. little yeah yeah yeah, I man, I love the game. I wish I could play more. I wish I had somebody that would would have, was as motivated to play that wasn't like my son. My son is just you know what he's so good. It almost seems like he's cruel sometimes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's just mean. Yeah, you know, you what, know I mean? what he does that on purpose too. Yeah, well, he, <laughs> I know he does to some extent, but he's a nice guy. He's a nice kid. He's just man. It's just sometimes so impossible. Yeah. Uh, there was a time though, probably six months ago, when we were playing at the beginning of the summer. No. It was yeah, it was the beginning of the summer, April. Okay, it was April. I was going out with him regularly, mm -hmm. maybe three or four times a week. Mm -hmm. And uh, I could return some of the balls mm -hmm. and with, with, with confidence. As a matter of fact, I was ripping him pretty well for a while there that I think I had him concerned a little bit. Mm -hmm. It started questioning himself a little bit because, I, you know, if I get into a rhythm and I step in early, and that's what I was doing too. I, wasn't, I was playing his serve not behind the baseline, mm -hmm. but in front of the baseline. Probably two, three feet inside the baseline. You got it. You got to make the adjustment, right? And I was just picking up that ball right on the rise, and I was, I was, I was doing some some work. He'll 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 have a different story. Yeah, Dad. Yeah, whatever, whatever. So, hey, listen, brother. Um, I gotta go. You probably have to go too. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this question: What do you want to tell these people in Valley Center that you haven't said already? We've talked about the the fantastic menu. We've talked about how you got here. How how the the Valley Center has opened themselves to you, and you got they're going to continue that. Uh, I, I most assuredly, you are going to be so busy during the warmer months of this place because here in Valley Center, it gets to be. I've I've seen this high as one. 105, 106, nothing too hot. Mm -hmm. But during those months, you are going to be slammed. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, I, and, and I'm telling you, you are a, the perfect addition to Valley Center. The perfect. Uh, they, they were, for a while back, they had that little ice stand that was in the gas station on the corner there. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it just never seemed consistent. I don't know if it was or not, but I, it just seemed like I never was compelled mm -hmm. to go in. I think I went there one time to get a shaved ice. And it wasn't exactly, you know, I mean... If you don't know any better, it's fine. Yeah. But I've, but I've, you know, I've been to a lot of spa places that have great, fantastic uh, uh, shave ice. You know, they they shave it off that block and they put all these good flavors in it. Uh, we don't have anything else like what you're doing in Valley Center. The closest place now is Dutch Brothers in Escondido, mm -hmm. and they're not the same at all. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think you're going to do very well here. I welcome you with all of my open heart and arms yeah. uh, because I'm a huge fan of Kung Fu Tea. And it sounds like you're going you're gonna to uh, take what they're doing and probably elevate it to a new level. Mm -hmm. So uh, welcome. Yeah. If, if I were to say anything to, to uh, you know, the, uh, the supporters and the community around about, you know, what we're doing and what we're trying to do, we are a small local business you know mom and pop is as it gets um paired with a a you know big big name corporation um and but this was all calculated you know we we've, we've done this um you know we we brought the project to where we are now um through a lot of careful planning and and, and a lot of learning and 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 every single day we're out there we're looking to produce the product that that really would make you happy um you know every everyone has been so nice uh showing up at the shop um at, at the truck there 
Um, you know, Armstrong feed, uh, helping us out there, supporting us, um, giving us the space there and whatnot has been, been, been so, so nice of, uh, you know, of a place to have the truck. Um, it, it's got enough space for everybody to stop in, stop out, you know, we're, we're, we're right off the main road where everybody gets to see yeah. us. So that space is, is definitely been critical in, in, in our, um, ability to serve the community for sure. Um, you know, th- these are handcrafted beverages. Uh, they, they, they are made in a fashion that, you know, uh, variability is, is there, but we obviously are looking for a very consistent product every time you show up. Um, if there's ever a point where you're not happy with your visit, you got to let me know. And that ge- because I have the control now being a small business owner to, to, to make sure that you leave the shop happy. Um, like I said, almost everybody has been, uh, through the times, but it, it, you know, with, with two people in a truck, um, and, and a small capacity of stuff, you know, if, if, if we're a little short on supply or if, um, you know, it might take a little bit longer than you expected, understand that, you know, we want it to be a, a, a proper product on the way out the door very uh, high quality and so the the wait times you know may fluctuate from some other places that you go to for a quick drink like a starbucks that's got you know 10 employees behind the counter yeah. um and things like that um but you know we uh, we're happy to do it we're absolutely glad uh f- for for every customer we get and and like i said the 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 bummer about not being there right now is 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 those people that are driving past the way and and not seeing our truck there. So understand it affects us on a greater level than just oh the you know the the truck's not there. But we we really wanted to be you know we we, we really want to make it happen and 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 to get a you know get, get the taste out there to you guys of us being there. Understand as soon as as soon as possible uh, we will be back in operation, uh, slanging out those those wonderful bubble teas that keep it cool on those hot days that we have in Valley Center, you know? And I'm going to say something. I, I don't want to beat you up, but I, I drove past there this morning and looked for you. Mm-hmm. I just, I, I was looking, where's going to be? Oh, not there. Oh. <laughs> and I drove past another day. I was, man, so I'm looking for you now. Mm-hmm. Now now you're on my radar. Mm-hmm. I'm going to stop and look every time I pass mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. So, Awesome, brother. Awesome. Yeah. So, look, uh, thank you for listening. Anything else you want to say, man, before we go? No, thank you uh, for the opportunity to come out here and talk to you. I mean, I, you, you know, I looking at your work and, and everything you do, it, it's I think it's a good way for exactly what we're talking about is, is spreading that small business love, um, you know, something that you might not have heard of, uh, get you guys an opportunity to hear some of the backstory into how this finally came to Valley Center. Um, I think this is, this is something that... Um, uh, is positive for everyone overall and, and, and it gets, gets us out there. So I appreciate it uh, more than you understand. You're absolutely welcome. And you're welcome on my show anytime. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be doing video soon and maybe we could do it again. Yeah, for sure. But, uh, yeah. So look, thank you for listening today. Be nice to each other. We'll talk to you soon.